All right, everybody. Hey, welcome to Direct Gaming. Today, we're going to be talking about the Xbox Showcase. This was like an hour and a half nonstop blizzard of gaming stuff coming out. No pun intended to the new owners of Activision Blizzard. I'm here with Lethal What Up, the man of the hour, the myth, the legend himself. How you doing, bud? I'm going to become the new Xbox fanatic of this channel. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> what did you think of this overall? Oh, my God, Bobby. I, I I absolutely loved this showcase. There was honestly so many announcements that there there's hardly maybe like maybe one or two that I just could not care for. But the majority, I was like glued to my screen watching, hyped. I didn't want it to end. I, it, there was just so many cool updates, a mix of like old IP that I was hoping we'd get to see some update on. And you know, I mean, I don't want to get to any like spoilery things, but we're gonna talk about it as we kind of go through it. But um. You know, there's some good old stuff to see bring back up, and then obviously some new cool, cool new stuff to see. And you no, know, Bobby, I saw a lot of day one on Game Pass, man. You know, if that tells me, Bobby, I don't got to worry about buying it. So I'm, uh, I'm signing excited, up for Game bro. Pass I'm for like six for months Pass. next year. <laughs> that's what I got to say about that show because a lot of good stuff that I can see all on Game Pass. That's honestly their technique and what they're going for, their strategy there. It, it started, I can see it, I see the vision. We always see the vision. I, we always see the yeah, vision. Yeah, we always do. So I we saw, always talk about it. I will say this is just for some reason this showcase, not even for some reason, it was a great showcase. This was just a, such a good showcase that like it just made that vision even better. Like it kind of just gives me more hope of like, yo, there's, there, you know, it's not dead. You know what I mean? Like it, there's some cool stuff in the pipeline. They're making some cool deals. Lots of Game Pass, good like, you know, games to be on there. Like a really good mix up of games. I'm so, again, just so excited. I thought this was a great showing. And I'm excited to talk more about this. So you know, I can sit here and go forever. Yeah, I, yeah, no, I, I agree. Uh, one of the things that you know, I, I said, I, I think it, <laughs> I think it went a little too long, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. But uh, I did think this was a fantastic showcase. And you and me last year, we talked for like two hours about their showcase last year and how much we loved it, right? So we're gonna talk a little bit about that too and what that means for me later. Um, Personally, I, th I really thought this was a fantastic showcase. It really was great. Um, but let's break it down and get into the games and stuff that was shown off. So we started off with Call of Duty Black Ops 6. I personally don't care because I don't care about Call of Duty. What do you think, Lethal? No, skip. Same. skip. Yeah, <laughs> like, I, sk I skip Call of Duty. I do not care. Like, I feel like Call of Duty is like the ultimate game for casuals now. Like, it's yeah. literally the game. Like, I had a roommate years ago who would come home he was an electrician he'd work all day climbing under people's houses in the summer 95 degrees all that he would come home and he would go to his room and he would just play call of duty all night and that's like that's that's the gamer that call of duty is at it's call of duty fans and then there's like gamers people who play video games right right like, i mean it, and and i yeah. think that's why they bought them because they know that they're like mm -hmm. we can capture a huge chunk of the the casual gamer market by buying Call of Duty, and then we get the profit off of that, it's, which is a smart business move. But yeah, if you're like me and, and Lethal, we don't care. So yeah. it, it's just cool <laughs> to see that it's going to be on Game Pass day one, right? That was the big like mystery. Yeah. Was like, are they going to put this on Game Pass? And they for sure made sure to yep. mention, hey, the next Call of Duty, Black Ops Six, is coming to Game Pass day one. And I'm just sitting here like, hey, I will say that if I had a friend that wanted to play or whatever, like that's how I'm going to play. Like, that's like, you know what I mean? Like there, yep. there is yep. that strategy to that decision of making that move where a lot of people are like, oh, it's like dumb and make money, blah, blah, blah. But like, got to think about the fact that like, you know, I'm curious to see how this does for Game Pass. Like, will they see an incredible large spike of people just switching to Game Pass now because of this? I, I'm, genu oh, I'm genuinely get. curious to see the outcome of what happens. I think they're probably at least going to get one to two million new subs on Game Pass. Yeah. For that, like, because I mean, anyone with a PC who's like, oh, I don't have to buy it because I only play it like three months when my friends want to play it. So I'll switch to Game Pass for two, three months to play with them. And then when they get burned out, I don't have to play it anymore. Um, I think that's they're probably expecting that. But at the same time, you know, that might get people to pay for Game Pass when they wouldn't have bought it because they know they're only going to play it for a month. Right. Right. So that's why, like, I don't like last time I, I think about Cold War in 2021 because, you know, we all had money and nothing to do. So, uh, you know, I, I had that, or maybe it was 2020, whenever that came out. Uh, but I, I ended up buying that. That was the last one I played, and I just, I, I tuned out after that. I just don't uh, care anymore. But hopefully that, that'll work out for them. I mean, they're going to have Call of Duty marketing, and that we know that's strong. That's what helped launch PlayStation 4 into the position it was in. Uh, next up after that was the Fallout 76 expansion, I think. 
and it was called Skyline Valley. It's coming June 12, 2024. My brothers have been playing this ridiculous. Like, like Chin was like, yeah, I played that like, I don't know. I think since the Fallout show came out, he plays it every night for like four hours. He comes home and just plays Fallout. Every time. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to be honest with you, man. I, I just automatically knew it was going to be 76 content, and I was just like, I'm good. Like, I, I, I pretty much have fallen off the 76 <laughs> wagon. It's it's no longer a thing for me. So it's cool that they're, like, you know, it's still giving to that game. Especially now, it makes sense because the success of the show. Yeah, right. Absolutely. They're, they're not going to, like, not do anything for 76 anymore if that was even ever a thought. But, I mean, even more so, it makes sense. Especially because this seemed like this is a pretty... Um, they, they announced it as, like, a, what, a map expansion, I think it was. So... It yeah, seems the first like, real map expansion. Yeah, yep. so it seemed like this is like, you know, maybe like a, a big step for them to be like, hey, like, we're still supporting this. We're going to keep supporting it and we're going to even go bigger with it. So, like, I, I, I respect that and I like that. But I will say I'm, <laughs> I'm ready for the next mainline follow up game. That's that's where I'm at with that series. So yes. I think when I that's the thing, I'll be way more excited for it. I, I'm going to bring up my first major disappointment with the show. Right. And like mm. I said, I think the show is I think the show is an A across the board as a show. Yeah. Right. We're going to talk about, like I said, my concerns later. But my first major disappointment with the show was we kept hearing rumors of a Fallout 3 remake. And we didn't see that. And I was like, damn, like I, that's what I would love. I would yeah. love to see a Fallout 3 remake. That would be chef's kiss for me, right? Because yeah. I'll just take you back. But yeah, 76, like my brothers are playing it. They keep telling me, yeah, you got to try it. But like Destiny expansion just came out. And this was like the best one in at least five years, at least. So i've been playing that like a lunatic but yeah i may check out 76 especially when this comes out like if it's on game pass you know actually i own it never mind i own it on steam so i'll just play it on steam because all the expansions are free which is good um but yeah like i haven't checked it out yet i might but yeah I, i'm kind of with you there i'm like yeah do i need to i don't know yeah uh the the next one was the first must play for me and i think you and me both agree on this is is uh, compulsion game south of midnight 100%. Sorry, I'm, I was trying to follow the list. My list is so different from yours, but 100%. That game, Okay. that game, I yeah. remember we got a, 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 a more of a glimpse from it last time, I think. Yeah, we and, got the guy. It was like the big giant guy playing yeah, the banjo it was, it was or like a, on the It log. was the cinematic yeah. trailer, kind of, right? That's yeah, kind of what it was. Yeah. More like a teaser, like a cinematic teaser of sorts. And it looked really good. And I kept thinking, like, man, I wonder how this game is going to play. And I will say, we did finally get that gameplay drop, which is really nice. And mm -hmm. it's I, I'm a fan of that stop motion design that they're doing, right? That cool aesthetic. And yes, I, it I, gave me Spider Verse vibe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, and yeah, I yeah. and I actually also like the art style of the game, like on top of that. Like, you know, there's that cool like thing to it with that on top of it. And mm -hmm. I will say the gameplay was what I was curious about. And it looks fun. The traversing, the way she was like um using she had like another like paraglider or a glider of sorts, like all these games are starting to have now, which is pretty cool to see. But like the way she's yep. like going through the wind tunnel, she was lassoing up with whatever she was using. Like the power itself seems really cool, like this threading thing that they're doing. Um but the one thing that I was like, hmm, I'm not sure how I feel about it, which was the combat section. They gave a little little glimpse of the combat section. And I think you said something on Twitter. It was akin to what I said and other people were saying, which was like, hmm, this is giving me a little bit of like uh, Canada Bridge of Spears a little bit. Yeah. Where that, it, where that it, combat it, it, might yep. not hit as much as we want it to hit, but everything else about it just looks so damn good, right? The performances and the characters and all this cool stuff that's happening with the story. Like, there's so much yeah. else that you just like, I'm going to, you know, I'm still like, no matter what, drawn to this game, I'm going to want to play it. And that's kind of how I felt with this. So I'm like, you know what? Combat might not be there for me. It's not. It might not hit. But the rest of this game just it's floored me. I, I'm I'm excited for this game. Oh, absolutely. I think I think I really think this is gonna be like Kana in New Orleans. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, no, that's yeah. That's what this is. It's giving me vibes of the animation, the art style. Like you said, oh, beautiful, absolutely. So I saw people like in the. I was watching the Game Awards channel on YouTube, right for it, and I saw people go like like l 12 fps i was like it's an artistic style choice and yeah. then when you see the combat start it's like flawless it's like 60 fps mm. beautiful and and then yeah like we think like with kana i think the thing with kana was we weren't expecting it to be like a dark souls ish style yeah. game it, and, it and the combat was a little too simple yeah for that and i think this might have the same problem yeah but overall, I'm still playing this absolutely day one. Yes. Like just just for the just for the art style. Like I, I we talked about this. I think the last show. Like you get me with an art style, you got me. Like yeah. if you get me interested in how a game looks, I will play it. That's it's as simple as that. Like, um, 
Yeah, and then the, the glider, the, the Breath of the Wild has ruined gaming glider. Um, yeah. <laughs> every time I see every time I see it, I always go back to like Breath of the Wild. I'm like, yep, everybody's no, gonna have it. Because that's what it was, yeah. Every, everybody's gonna like, have it. It's yeah, because that's what happened is, you know, Breath of the Wild had it. The only thing that really No, I think Breath of the Wild was the first one to really come out with that. I mean, there's other games that had it, yeah. but ever since then I think it popularized every kind of open it. game, yeah, yeah, it popularized it, right? Mm -hmm. And so yeah, I think this game looks fantastic. I'm absolutely checking this out day one. This is one of those months where I will be sub to Game Pass, Microsoft, so you got me there, right? Like, And, man, I am excited because, like, this stuff coming, I just want it to come out and be good, right? Right. Uh, okay, so, yeah, I guess the lists are getting mixed up or something. Uh, but Expedition 33 with the oh. homie Ben Starr, who is, like, the man. I love that guy. Uh, I called that. As soon as I watched it, I was like, that's Ben Starr. I could just hear mm -hmm. Clive. You could hear Clive in the in the trailer the art style of this one too like ooh, beautiful creepy kind of gothic horror-ish stuff it, going it, it on had, it had the uh i call it the uh liza p effect it had that really cool yes, gothic, yeah, that gothic style horror, renaissance yep. weird mm -hmm. vibe aesthetic kind of back in the day i don't know it it had like a good mixture of like these other games that you can think of but it it was cool i mean when they were having the moments where you're walking through different maps i was like oh my god I was like, this is yeah. going to be one of those, like, spectacle games. Like, it's going to be a pretty-ass game. Like, there's so much going on that I'm just like, dude, this looks good. This looks good. This looks good. Um, I don't yeah. know if you're going to get into the combat or to the actual, like, you know, RPG component of it. Yeah, that's one of the things that we were talking about right before we started recording. And I wanted to bring up on this recording is that the only thing I'm worried about with this game, because it looks great, but I feel like it might be alienating because it's going for, like, a Western and an Eastern look right like it's got like a jrpg combat system it looks like but it looks like it's trying to keep it westernized in how it delivers which i, I think is going to be jarring for a lot like i'm down with it to at least try it out but it looks like it's going to be jarring for people i'm right? gonna be honest i'm loving it i i we're, we're, we're differ we're definitely different on this one i i loved it i thought it looked really cool it's uh I, I wish i could think of like other games that like are that are very similar in that type of style and i it, the only one that's coming to me are like the chrono the, the chrono trigger games and the most recent yeah. uh what was it um Sea of Stars, like it, it, yes. it has like that. Uh, what do you want? I even I can't think of the right term for it, but you know, it, it's that turn-based RPG. But it has like it's, like, it's like dynamic turn. -based. Yeah, it has like that yeah. mechanic where like you can like once you, uh, you once you activate the move or you, you you play the move, you get to do like a little bit of like an interactive component where you can do more with it. And so like I dig it, and I don't. I feel like it's not something that you see too common. I feel like in in RPGs today, at least, and when I'm thinking of like more common traditional turn-based games, I'm thinking of like mm -hmm. the personas and whatnot. So. This to me was like, ooh, this looks interesting. Like, you know, they're really trying to push that type of style forward more. And and I don't know, it, you you blend that with the visuals of this game, and I was like, I'm honest, I'm, I was captivated by it. I was like, dude, this looks great. I'm down. No, for I was, it. I was actually like, I was actually like, I'm down to check that out personally. Yeah. I just think, I just think the like the the common player is gonna look at that and go, this is just weird, right? Like, cause mm. cause like you said, it is like a Chrono Trigger, like Sea of Stars, where it's like a dynamic turn based, and I like that, right? That's the same thing as Mario RPG, too. There's like, yeah. you know, you could add yeah, yeah. stuff by timing your attacks, right? And that, that's what got me into it back in the day. And then obviously, like, Chrono Trigger, right? And then, like you said, newer Sea of Stars. But uh, with with this, it just it's the way it's delivered, like, visually. Mm -hmm. I think that's what's going to throw off the common, you know, like, the common game of the everyday gamer who's like, oh, let me check this out. But it is Game Pass, so it's obviously getting at high numbers, yeah. right? Just on the visuals, I think, alone. Um and hopefully it takes off and can get some some sales like but this one's also coming 2025 just like south of midnight that is one thing that yeah. we noticed a lot of too was a lot of 2025 yep right which is you know it makes sense yeah um, and i also say this is also a game pass title too so you know they, yeah. it, i'm glad that they at least got the game pass i i imagine they paid a good chunk to get this game day one i, I don't know if it's a day one but they got this game to be on game pass i i feel yeah. like i feel like if they're announcing game pass now most likely it's going to be a day one on game pass Mm. I could be wrong, but I mean, regardless, uh, I'm glad that, you know, this is going to be a game where for anybody who's like not too sure if they want to buy it, this is this is where we had that conversation of like, hey, this is where Game Pass is good, right? This is where Game Pass kind of shines a lot. So it's like, yeah, you don't have to worry about buying it. Get it with your Game Pass subscription. So like, you know, this is for me, this is one of those games where I am getting Game Pass for this for sure. Not the, and there's a ton here that we're yeah. going to go over, but like, oh, absolutely. It's just one, yeah. This is one of those like star games of like, mm, I'm not like this is something that I'm not sure if I'd buy it day one, but because it's on Game Pass day one. This you is can gonna try make it, it, yeah, and then like, but here's the thing. Here's the thing that does suck for Microsoft, for me, right? Because I don't have an Xbox, but uh, I, you know, I've played games on Game Pass that I love, 
And the thing that I do is immediately go buy them on Steam. Right. Like, and so I do feel bad. I mean, I don't know if I've done that with any Microsoft game. Uh, oh, uh, MCC. MCC I did that with. Right. But, uh, we didn't. Oh, yeah. We didn't see a Halo. I thought we were going to see the Halo. No, we but didn't. That, I mean, I'm surprised, sad. honestly, too, because, I, I mean, I've heard so many mixed takes on how the game is currently doing. You know, so I would have thought, you know, they maybe they have something cool to kind of announce and show off here. But at this point, man, I don't even know what's going on with Halo. <laughs> I have no idea. I mean, there's so many crazy things with Halo right now. So Yeah, I mean, they, the Halo, yeah. like, remake, Halo 1, which I'd be down with, like, a, a yeah. Combat Evolved remake, remaster, whatever. I love Combat Evolved. That's one of my, probably one of my top 10 games. It's definitely my top shooters of all time, maybe only after Destiny. Like. Right. I just I absolutely love Halo CE like um but yeah like uh, yeah just Halo please do something with Halo and make it make it work uh next up we had Warcraft I played Warcraft for like an hour back in 2004 and that was it uh do, do you keep up on Warcraft I do not but I'll tell you okay. what I've recognized that it was Warcraft when I saw it I saw the ogres yeah, I, yes. and I was and like I, yep. yeah that's true I mean to, be fair, it's to be fair I think it had like the blizzard you know premiere thing and I was like all right this is probably you know at least World of Warcraft I had that look but um no you know it's cool it's cool to see that stuff oh one of the things I'm not seeing on this list that I know was there was uh Dragon Age yeah yeah see I see it on the mine Vanguard. I see it on mine that's why yeah, I was, yeah. that's why I was confused I was like wait are we just gonna skip over some of these because there was some more my, stuff my bad. Uh, no, yeah, you're I'm, good. I'm you're looking, good. I was looking up and down I was like I feel like Dragon Age was by yeah. this point yeah so we have different lists we're working off we're gonna if I forget any lethal feel, yeah. feel free to be like hey yeah, uh, yeah. what about this one? I'll try to come back uh but yeah the Dragon Age Vanguard, as someone who worked on Dragon Age Origins back in the day mm. uh this was exciting yeah because like Dragon Age is I mean that's it's special to me like yeah. I got to I, I mean I got to play all of Origins before it came out and i remember telling her like you know you can't talk when you know even if you're especially if you're a tester like at my level at certifications you could not talk about it because you're seeing the end product right yeah but my friends were like oh do you know anything about that dragon age game that's that's coming out from like being published through ea right and i was like play that game i bought copies of it for like four or five of my friends because back in the day we used to get um pc copies of games for 10 bucks uh, so I just I bought a copy for my brothers. Uh, I bought one for, my, for one of my brothers. No, I bought it for my brothers on consoles because they didn't have it. But I bought it for two of my friends on uh, PC too. I was like, you guys just just play this. Uh, it's it's fantastic back then, um, and now to see a new Dragon Age is actually looking really fantastic for me. Um, I, I just, it's just taking you back to that world. It's it's really really cool. Yeah. What do you think? I mean, I, I always feel like I see the Dragon Age games and I'm always interested and I just don't play them. It's one of those like I'm, I'm always down and I, they look good. And I'm like, man, I want to play this and I just end up never playing them. I, I played like one Dragon Age game like back in the day. I couldn't even tell you which one it was. Um, but I remember like when this was being shown off in the showcase, I was trying to figure out like what this game was, man. And I was like, EA, I think they said Bioware. I was like, this is probably Dragon Age. Because yeah. a part of me, you know, a part of me was thinking for a split second when they showed like Bioware. I was like, oh, my God, could, could this be the Mass Effect game? Cause I was like, I know, I know, I know they're cooking on another Mass Effect. So I was like, is it like when are we gonna get that out there? But it turned out to be, you know, this is definitely Dragon Age moment. I start seeing the characters. Um, I still want that. I still want them to to redo Anthem. I'm just, hey I'm man, so upset about. Maybe it. one day. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'm, one day. I'm upset about it. <laughs> uh, but no, I mean, it looks, it looks good. I mean, again, they always, these games always look cool and good. It's just, you know, I never really get a chance to really play them. And maybe I'll play this one. But this one, I will say, it looked, it looked pretty good. Well, yeah, it's it's just like Baldur's Gate, right? You have yeah. to be a person who's who's that, down that's with what that it is. type of yeah. big RPG, and obviously, like Bioware, right back in the day, were like the kings of the Western RPG, right? And then, right. you know, Bethesda kind of reared their head with with Skyrim and stuff, and, and Fallout to a lesser extent. And then, you know, now we have Larian, who's you know they're probably the kings right now. But I think Bioware, if they focus up and really understand that like you know it's not like anthem where they're trying to make a live service and then they just don't right do any research into the genre like <laughs> they get so many companies like suicide squad right um it ends up just being like a a thing where if they focus up i think the bioware that old bioware is still in there somewhere and that dna is still in that company like the people who work for bioware they want to go work on something like dragon age right or like uh mass effect right so like if these people are passionate and they're doing it right and and they're really gonna kind of like adhere to the 
the legacy of the IP, I think we're in for a good time. I really do. Um, let me see. Did we talk about Doom? Oh, Doom! That was the second one. Yeah, yeah. That, okay. okay saying, I, I yeah, think right. my list is a little bit different, but I was going to go over Doom because we did, we did pass over Doom because that game, Doom. that game looked good I, for a second. It took me, it took me a minute to figure out what this game was, and then I saw the suit of armor, and I was like, oh, this is the new Doom game. And uh, Dark Ages, it looks, it looks good. I mean, that's I, I hate to say it, but I only ever played one Doom, and I think it was like the remake or maybe remaster i think of like, 2016 yeah it might have been that doom yeah. and that was that's a it. reboot it was like a reboot yeah it was yeah. like a reboot of source like that's the only yeah. game i played so when i saw this one i was like oh damn this looks crazy uh but yeah i know a lot of people love doom so like i'm sure this is like popular for a bunch of people oh yeah so so as 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 long as i've been uh able to experience computers i've played doom and right and like it wasn't it wasn't uh you know, I didn't I didn't get into PC gaming till way late in my life. Like my buddy Dan, um, he's been PC gaming since he was like eight, right? Mm -hmm. And I think his dad showed him how to build PCs when he was younger. His dad's like a super smart, crazy engineer for like NASA or Lockheed or something. So he showed him how to build a computer and Dan like I play games and uh but I remember being in middle school, like like being twelve or thirteen and playing doom on the school computers because one of the teachers he had a really nice computer and he was like hey he was a math teacher he's a really cool dude and he was like hey if you uh if you guys do you know do your work and you want to do it i've got a couple games on there one of them was doom right so you could play doom on pc back in the day that was like the mid 90s um but yeah like now a lot of the younger generation is getting exposed to doom through doom 2016 which was really cool uh, the only thing I worry about with Doom is just the music. It sounded okay, but like Mick Gordon obviously brought something special to those newer Doom games, and you know he now obviously they 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 parted on not very good terms. So I'm hoping the spirit remains the same and they do you know the music the same way because that that kind of like super grindy heavy metal is part of the new Doom. Right. I mean, it's always been part of. I mean, Doom has always been like a heavy metal game, but. Like, you know, especially like with how Mick Gordon used the music to really enhance the gameplay. Um, yeah, dude, they had dragon riding. I don't know if that was like a staple in the games, but it looked like you were like, he like in one season, like riding a dragon or the characters like riding a dragon. I was like, dude, this game looks crazy. Yeah, I think they're going hard with it, which should yeah. be good. I like right? that, though. That's cool. But I mean, it looks it, like, yeah, it looks like the stuff. Doom, the new Doom, which is yeah. good. Like, that's what we need. Um, we need that series to continue. But we did also get conf confirmation that it is coming to PlayStation. And that was one of those rumors. So this is, you know, uh, this is one of those things that, you know, we're seeing we're seeing that that third party thing a little more. Um, I, and I don't know if this because it's a legacy title or you know they're just like hey doom will sell on playstation and make us a bunch of money because doom sold really well both of them right um so we we, we don't know yet uh so wh what do you have next so maybe we'll the, ne the next one that we have then is state of decay three okay yeah state of decay this one like there was really minimal gameplay right yeah this is very more of like a cinematic a lot of cgi yeah very very which, uh cgi ish but i mean it, it looked like weird. it had snippets of gameplay i couldn't really that, tell yeah like, like it was like, was like it was cgi cgi and then, yeah yeah and then blending into yeah. gameplay like mm -hmm. trying to do it seamlessly yep, yep. and then popping back out of it uh i i mean the gameplay looked all right but it, it, there's so little of it right that yeah, like, <laughs> I don't know what to think I, about I, that. I had this conversation on my stream. We were talking about it, and I was like, I'm going to be honest. The whole, like, squad up taking out some zombies and then some, like, you know, mutated zombie, freaky, you know, alien things is it's such a, a such a over and used and done type of deal with me. So, like, when these yes. types of games get shown off again, I'm just like, dude, I'm sorry. But, like, I'm ready to get out of this era of, like, co-op shooter get a friend zombie, and take out yeah. some zombies and then and it's not even just zombies anymore it's always like the mutated type so it's like it looks like it's it's zombie at first and then it goes into like mutation right and he's like these bigger zombies you gotta take out or whatever yeah. you want to call these and abominations it, it's like it's like redfall and yeah. back for blood it's, right i'm just like, done I, I think i'm just done i think a lot of us are just kind of very much done and tired of zombie like i feel yeah, like that's yeah, good <laughs> that was a lot of, no i was gonna say that was a lot of the sentiment i saw in yeah. the in the game awards chat was like we're really making a zombie co-op in 2024. Yeah, it's just like, and, it's and done. Yeah, it, it's I think Back for Blood. I think Back for Blood showed that really because Back for Blood was all the Left for Dead DNA, yeah. and yeah, it had scaling issues, but it was just like that. We're over it. 
Like right. as a as a gaming like as a whole in gaming, we're over that. You're right. Like I don't know anyone who's like, yeah, you know what I really need is another Left 4 Dead style game. Fifteen years later, like we we don't. Sorry, <laughs> we don't need that anymore. Um, <laughs> yeah, that was so. State of the K. I can, you know a lot of people wait. But we were this was in like the 2019 or 2020 showcase. Yeah, State this, of the K3? this, if I'm not mistaken, I think I always confuse for some reason. I always confuse State of Decay with Stalker. Those two games, I confuse. I don't know which one was at launch, or they were both at launch. I'm not too sure, but I it might have been one of the ones that had been shown off for a long time. And I don't know. I I can't remember if they went through some type of developmental issues or something. Like I'm I'm not too sure what might have happened. Um, but I I do think I don't know. This could be one of the titles that have been said a long time ago. And Bobby, it's still. No release date to this day. That's yeah. <laughs> so this, that's that's like the bigger thing is that like to this issue, still you know to still nothing. So it's like I don't know. It, it's going to be interesting. Yeah, and I I'm really really hoping that we man. Yeah, I'm really hoping that we see <laughs> something uh something coming up with that at least because I know a lot of Xbox fans really like State of Decay and they've been waiting for it. Yeah, but I you know I just I I don't. Uh, it's, I, I just don't know what to think. Uh, think about that. Uh, Starfield. Starfield, yes, sir. That's. I'll be honest. I, I, I think I can't remember if we were both on the same page with Starfield, Bobby, because I, I liked it and I enjoyed it. And I don't remember if you did as much. I know you played it. I don't know if you finished it. I did not finish it. Okay, I, okay, I it liked it for the first. I don't know. Yeah. It was like the first like 10 hours. I was like, this is cool. And uh, I, the, the thing that really lost me, Lethal, is... Like I, I am cool with like having varying type of stories. Yeah. And I was doing the faction quests, and I did like part of the one with the big monsters, and I did part of the one where you're tracking down the guys who are harassing the farmers, and then I came across the one on Neon that was like the corporate espionage one, and like I'm, I like, I love that, you know, that kind of storytelling. I love that shit, right? And I came across that quest. I was like, I'm doing this. I'm doing this right away. Like I did all that quest. And like it ended with a fucking boardroom meeting, and that was it for me. I just like I was like, no, dude, <laughs> no. Like I, I, they lost me with that, and yeah. may, like I want to go back and try it again, like because you know I've heard the updates are really good. Yeah, and and they dropped know, but, another one today too. They did like another. Yeah, they're dropping uh, another they, one. Like I'm, I, shadow, I still have. Uh, I got a laptop that came with a month of Game Pass, so I still got a couple of days left on that. Uh, I played through Hellblade. That was like, conveniently a few days after I got that Game Pass, so um, I might check that out tonight. Yeah. Uh, but Shattered Space uh, looks pretty cool, and that, like, give me that cosmic horror shit. Mm -hmm. Absolutely done with that. Yeah, and this is something I will be checking out. Yeah, I, I remember at first kind of being like, "What? What is this?" And then I, I put it together. I was like, "I think this is Starfield." You know what it is? I noticed it was yeah. the like the uh, the one jetpack, like the like kind of like the main outfit. Oh the no, I saw wearing. it the second I saw it because the yeah. the global lighting that Starfield uses that is one oh, of you the things it about there. it. Gotcha. Yeah, the just like the second they showed the first thing, I was like, "This is Starfield." Just the way yeah. they use the light in that game, and I will say, like, I played Fallout Four. Starfield in terms of graphics is leaps and bounds ahead. Oh yeah, of Starfield. But the one thing I did notice is that the game is like looks insane, right? All the lighting, the ray, like it's not ray tracing; it's the the real time global illumination or whatever. No, nope. it was all it was all crazy looking. And then you see the character's face. Yeah, and I was like, I Ooh. mean, that's like the, <laughs> that's the uh, the Bethesda specialty, man. You know, the, the environments yeah. look great, everything looks great. The aliens look yes, fucking, they get scary, and then you get hit with the uh, you know the face models, and you're like, uh, I don't know how I feel about this. Uh, but yeah. yeah, but I was just gonna say, like, all in all, I I am interested. I'm gonna go back in. I'm gonna play it. I'm definitely yeah. excited uh, to go into this new part of this new world or how. I'm not sure how big it's gonna be, but it seems like it's a, a pretty big thing. Uh, yeah, so, it says it says Trackers Alliance, mm -hmm. uh, the Vulture. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's just like a whole new story beat to it, and I'm curious yeah. if we're gonna get more access to more powers because you know there that was the whole thing with the other one was getting these. Uh, the different powers powers and stuff like that. So I'm curious if they're going to add more of those in here. Um, mm. How they're going to continue the story. I mean, I'm not sure. I, I mean, you didn't beat the game, so I don't want to get into like, spoilery stuff. But the way the game ends and everything, it's it's pretty crazy. And I'm kind of curious to see if this kind of picks off more off of that of the ending. And when you get to you know get introduced to all that stuff there, like it's hard not to get into it. But the point is, I'm excited to see where this stems and where just kind of like bridges off of from the game's like ending. So. It'll be interesting for sure. I mean, I mean, I'm definitely interested in it. Okay, now we have Metal Gear, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Warcraft yeah. expansion August 26th, and then Metal Gear Solid 
Delta Snake Eater. We don't have a release date for this yet either. It looks great though. Yeah. It, visually, it looks stunning. It, like, man. Um, and I hope they're able to do it right and they don't do some weird thing where they change up too much of it because that's, with this, it's, I don't know, it's like Final Fantasy Rebirth. I'm down for those changes. That's fun. Yeah. But this is one that I don't feel like you are going to get away with changing a bunch of stuff. Yeah, I mean, you know, what's your, what's your like, history? Have you played this before, this game? No, not this. I played Metal Gear 1 and 2. Okay, okay, okay. I didn't play this one. Uh, I, I kind of fell off Metal Gear after that, which I need to go. I want to get that collection and just go so back good. and run through all of them. So good, yeah. Uh, but this one I know is, like, legendary. I know yeah. so many people A lot are of people like, love this one. It's definitely yeah. a, one of the more beloved, I would say, Metal Gear games. The soundtrack, yeah. at least in the original, was, like, really good. Um, yeah. Top tier music in there. Um, but story-wise, incredible. Like, I mean, yeah. they all are, but this one I think is like up there. So it's just so good. Um, that's my thing is like is like, and that's part of why I think like you know we've heard that that Rebirth. I like yeah. I said, I think it's fantastic, but we've heard that Rebirth hasn't sold super hot, and we heard that remake. A lot of people were critical of the changes they made to the story because it's such a beloved story, yeah. right? So I would hate to see the same kind of thing happen here. Um, I mean, I guess if you if you want to do it and you really can do it but like if you're changing a you know kojima story that I, I, a, I was gonna say it, it's kind of hard because like I, I don't think they want to alter too much right because i yeah. i can't imagine you wanting to change anything of kojima's vision when he was going through these games so that's kind of a wild thing to want to change too much of it I, I would say but um i mean beside that i mean i just wanted to just you know it was nice to see i want to say it was nice to see more of the gameplay um you know even though it's like a little bit more of like a, a clip a quick kind of snippet of it of a bunch of different actions that he's doing but mm -hmm. it looks good I'm, I'm excited for this um it was good to see some of the characters that we know and love if you play this game a lot of the cutscenes look really good um they they did some cool stuff that like i i'm really excited to see i mean it, they were showing a lot of the cool stuff of like being in the water having like the hat to kind of blend in with the environments that was like a big thing of this game was like blending in with the environments and everything the camouflage system was like mm -hmm. really cool and so uh, I, I'm genuinely really excited for this game. I know you mentioned no release day. I, I just didn't think this game was going to come out this year anyways. I don't um, either. Yeah, I didn't think it was going to come out this year anyways. I, th I think it, there's a chance it comes out next year, which is kind of funny considering that Death Stranding 2 is, is supposed to come out next year. So that would be interesting to see these two go up against each other. Um, but, I, you know, save that conversation for another time. But that would be an interesting thing to see. But I was going to say, too, as I remember this being shown off last time at a state of play. So it, it threw me off when they got this for the uh, Xbox Showcase. So it's, it's cool to see, you know, that this is obviously going to be all over the place. Uh, but I, I can't remember if this is coming on PC, too. But at least it's good to know that, like, console wise, it's coming out on Xbox and PlayStation. I, that was the other thing I thought that was weird, too, right? Because I, I thought to myself, wasn't this at the Sony show? Yeah, it was. Year? It was. It was. It was at the, it was at the yeah, I okay. think it was a state of play or a showcase. Either way, this was first turned off with PlayStation. And so I kept thinking, like, oh, they're going to get the marketing to this. But it looks like Konami might just be, you know, back and forth, kind of, you know, getting this game around. But I think Konami is going with a strategy that a lot of publishers are going with now, which is get your game everywhere. I think the, yeah. the whole exclusivity thing, right, as we kind of have seen, is starting to become a, a less of a thing. Square Enix is publicly was like, hey, you know, we're going to stop trying to do that as much. We, we, we need to start getting our games everywhere and, you know, trying to get that money back, hopefully. But, uh, yeah, no, it was just it, it was definitely a shocker when we saw this or when I saw this, because I was like, dude, what they got? They got a new Metal Gear uh, trailer here. So it was good. I mean, all in all, it, it reinforces that, like, I think this is going to be good. I, I think it's nice to see Konami back in action, you know, kind of like pushing out mm -hmm. these beloved games. So it looks good. I'll say that it looks good. Yeah, I'm, I'm really hoping uh, that Konami, like we said, just, do, just does this right and does this remake the right way. Because um, otherwise, you're just going to piss a bunch of people off. Right. And that's the last thing they need because, I mean, they've already done that so many times. Uh, next up, we have Sea of Thieves. Uh, I have not played this since it released. I had a lot of fun playing it when it first released, and then I just, like, fell off of it. And here's my problem, though, and I'm just old. I, I've tried a couple times to get back into it and I cannot figure out how to start a mission. So someone one day just take me through Sea of Thieves, please. But actually this looked pretty cool. Um, where you get to be like the bad guy. Mm -hmm. Like you get to be the evil pirate and you get to have like the super strong ship where everyone's got to come at you at the same time. Uh, you know, it's like a juggernaut mode kind of thing, yeah. right? Yeah, I mean, I, uh, I, I'm same thing with you, Bobby. I, I'm not, you know, I pretty much have never, I've actually like played it once and never, never wanted to get back into it. Um, but I mean, it's it's just, you know, it's cool that they're still pushing this game and 
I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I guess it's cool to see that. A part of me does wish that like we'd see something else come out of that studio at this point. But I mean, I, I, I can't unless they. Does Rare have anything else that they're working on, or is it just Sea of Thieves? Not that I know of. Yeah, that, as far as I know, they they are the yeah, Sea of Thieves it's, studio. It, this that, is the something that makes me sad. Is that like you know, Rare. It's crazy to think that Rare is really just the Sea of Thieves uh, company nowadays. So like it's. One of those for this me, why, when I see that, I'm just like, oh, man. It's, this it's is sad. why I was not that sad about Factions, you know, when yeah, Naughty yeah, Dog yeah. said, we Fair. don't want to be just a Faction studio, and that's what we'd have to be. I mean, look at Rare. Look at Bungie. Bungie, like, after 10 years, is barely getting Marathon by right now because Destiny requires so much time and attention. Yeah. Like, it's it's just that live service machine has... It's just like, right? We said that about Game Pass, right? Game Pass has to be fed. They have to feed it with good stuff. Like, that's why they have to spend all this money. That's why they bought Bethesda. That's why they bought Activision is to so they can have all this stuff for uh, Game Pass. And we see that with live service games, too. Like, Rare, until Sea of Thieves is done, I don't think we're going to see another thing from Rare. They just don't have the, the capacity... Yeah. Right, as like a studio to have another team split off because Sea of Thieves is what makes them money, so they need right. to keep that going, right? But yeah, Sea of Thieves very popular. Uh, as when I played it, it was fun, that was when it was starting just as a gameplay. The mechanics were fun, and now I understand it has a lot more stuff. One of these days, I want to get back into it, and check it out, but uh, you know, it is what it is. Uh, Flintlock, we heard about this one finally again. Uh, this looks kind of cool. Yeah, uh, I, it looks looks very Unreal Five. That's one of the things mm -hmm. I want to say about all these games. They look very Unreal Five. You know, a lot of yeah. a lot of rocks with jagged edges. And <laughs> you know, d very dynamic lighting. Yeah, that's what I. It's like Unreal Three, where like every like dude with just like a beef bus. You know, like Arkham, mm -hmm. or Batman's just like super jacked. Yeah. You know, and every every thug is that was just like Unreal Three. Like every game in Unreal Three, the dude like gears right like every just like a, a hunk of meat like it's unreal five is just like there are rocks and like grass and shit yeah I, I, I was gonna <laughs> say for me i i i'm not gonna lie i thought this game had come out already this was one of those games where i was like did this not come out already it's like i thought this came out already uh but you know it's cool they got a release date i remember they seeing got this. a release date yeah I, i'm glad i got a release date it's actually coming out like very soon like next month like matter of fact yeah 100 percent. it's next month it's july 18th yeah july um, 18th What's it called? Um, no, I, I remember it being first shown off, and I, I was like, you know, I was definitely interested in it, and you know, I it's just cool to see more of it, I guess. Um, I don't know. I guess I don't really have much to say about it. This is one of those games where, like, is it Game Pass? Let me just double check. Yeah, it is Game Pass. So like, this again, this is one of those where it's like, hey, I'm like sort of interested. I'm sort of interested into this. Um, it's on Game Pass. I'll probably get Game Pass to try it out. Um, you know, I, I, there's not much else I guess I can say about it. It, it. The combat looks fun. Like the game, this is like the traversing system looks really cool too. Like it, it had mm. a cool, a lot of cool things to it. I, I think you're like what you're saying though. It has like a little bit of like, like a little bit of like a generic feel to it. So I'm not too sure how much this is gonna get me into it. This is the same, I think, studio behind. Uh, I, th oh, I, th I think Kepler. I don't know if it's the same developers, but I think that this publisher also had like score now and stuff like that. So I, I'm interested to see how this one fares. I, I, I think, it'll, I think it'll be fun. I don't know if it'll be like, you know, uh, this breakout big massive game. Um, but yeah. it looks like it's going to be, a, you know, like a, just a fun game to play. All right. Then we have the RTS Age of Mythology, right? That was an RTS. That's what it looked like to me. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I mean, not my Which cup of tea, I, man. But not, not my thing. Either. I'm not like, I don't know. I don't. Oh, I know. Okay. Never. I take it back. I know one person who plays RTS still. And that's, that's the people I know who used to play a ton of RTS. I know one person who still plays <laughs> RTS games. Uh, he's probably gonna dig this, uh, but I, I feel like RTS is just a, a genre that's like going out. It's really weird because it was such a huge thing. Like it wasn't ever in the limelight, but it was such a huge thing. Like in core gaming forever yeah. was RTS, and now it's like it's not really there anymore. Like the audience for it is just aging out of it, or, or I was gonna say, I, 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 don't say know. I was gonna say, if anything, it maintains that same like niche core audience that kind of like never, you know, what I mean, like they never really explore outside of it too much. And to be fair, I feel like it's always the same, like those same like uh, same series or franchises that just keep getting coming up with new ones and new ones. Like it's it's rare that you see like a brand new type of style to like compete with these because I feel like they already kind of have their like established fan bases. If that makes any sense. So I'm not surprised. Like this goes up there, but like the Sid Meier's of the world, you know, like those games that just yeah, always yeah, like have a new one every yeah. year. You yeah. don't really see too much competition. I mean, you do, but like it's almost like those are just always the, the typical bigger scale ones that I feel like you, you always see. 
Yeah, so with that, I mean, it, look, it looked good for an RTS, right? It actually yeah. looked really nice. It's a remake, I think, or a remaster or something. It says retold, but it is coming to... Oh, no, it doesn't... Oh, no, it is coming to Game Pass. That is. So, and it says September 4th, so that's another one with a release date. Up next, it was one of the heavy hitters, and I think you and me are going to have words about this one is perfect dark oh what i thought it looked uh, good go ahead you want to go first and then i go uh, I'll, okay, I'll bring the positive okay. if you want to bring the negative <laughs> sure the, it, like okay so we heard in like 2021 it, it got rebooted right oh okay you're gonna go from that angle gotcha gotcha, gotcha. so we heard in 2021 yeah. it got rebooted i i literally think they saw cyberpunk was like shit we should make that mm. this game looks so much like I, I was even talking to chin for a minute He's like, oh yeah, I saw it. it. Looks good. And I was like, dude, that looks like cyberpunk. And he was like, well, yeah, it looks like they took took some of it. And I was like, chin, that looks like cyberpunk. He's like, okay, yeah, it looks like cyberpunk. Like it looks like they put yeah. cyberpunk in a vision or in a in a vision in a city from like Pandora, like Avatar Pandora. <laughs> like, yeah, that's what it looks like to me. And I was like, like it doesn't look bad. It just looks like not unique. It looks extremely yeah. derivative of cyberpunk. And that that's my main issue with this was that uh, overall, like it looks fantastic, but yeah. it, it doesn't look like anything that wasn't done three years ago. Yeah, I, I remember when they first debuted this game as like the quadruple A title, if I'm not mistaken. And yeah, this yep. is nowhere near quad. I mean, in my opinion, this is nowhere near that quadruple A level like they, they made it out to be. Uh, but I will say for another Perfect Dark game, and I only have the only time I played Perfect Dark was on 360. I remember that being one of the first games I played, which I think was Perfect Dark Zero, if I'm not mistaken. I think it was that one. And yeah. so, I mean, this looks like, you know, as if we had a Perfect Dark in today. Um, but it did. Yeah. But, it, but the point, I guess for me, I guess I wasn't expecting this to be that quadruple A title like they had tried to say that it was going to be. Um, I, I very much got that feel right away that this wasn't going to be that um, when I saw it. But I will say it did a lot of cool things that have me like kind of like, like actually kind of excited for it. Uh, you know, it, they, they did some cool things where, like, she was, like, pairing enemies and, like, doing, like, a cool, mm -hmm. like, attack type of deal, which I thought was kind of mm -hmm. cool. Not that it's, like, something that's maybe not have, has never been done before type of deal. I, I don't know. I'm sure that's been done elsewhere plenty of times. Uh, but, you know, it, it kept that cool kind of, like, you know, perfect dark aesthetic to me that I, that I remember from 360 days. Um, but I will say it's it's by nowhere, it's, it's nowhere near when they were, you know, touting this to be, like, the second coming of Christ. Like, it's not that game, at least for me. Already, yeah, like I said, remember yeah. the other game that that was touted as a quadruple A was Skull and Bones. So you know, you that's that's where our yeah. bar is for yeah. that. Um, with no, I I don't think the, I don't think Perfect Dark is going to be bad. Yeah. I just think that, like I said, it looks extremely derivative of Cyberpunk. Like we like I said, we heard it was rebooted in like 2021, and it. I really think they saw Cyberpunk and like shit. Let's make that game, guys. Let's make Perfect Dark yeah. into that. And and there's nothing wrong with it. I I did like there was some cool little stuff like. The parkour was a little more, but that, that you know, that yeah. seems like they just took that from Thief, which that's what it reminded me of. Which Thief, you know, the PS4 Thief was not bad. I, I think it was on three six or uh, Xbox One too, but it wasn't it wasn't great, but it wasn't terrible. Yeah. Um, but it had some cool stealth mechanics, which is what Thief was always about. Yeah. Uh, and I'm hoping you can utilize some of that too. But uh, yeah, I think Perfect Dark. It's gonna be a good one. Um, and you know, depending I mean, if it, it could come out and just shock us and really be flawless, yeah. who knows? I would be down. I, I was gonna say is I couldn't remember the studio that's making this is the I think it was the initiative and then the it's initiative also, and also Crystal, Crystal Dynamics. Dynamics. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's like a split thing. I think they're both kind of working yep. on it. I think now. But I was gonna say I think the initiative is, if I'm not mistaken, is also supposed to be working on. If I'm, I, I thought it was them. I could be wrong, or maybe I'm thinking of IO. I don't know. I can't remember. I was going to say, I thought this was the studio that was making the next James, that was making the new James Bond game, but that might be a different studio, I think. Um, uh, I, I don't, I don't know, know about that. I, I was going to say, like, you know, at this point, I think where I'm at with Perfect Dark, like, let's, let's just get it out, man. Let's just move past this as, like, you know, a game that was promised at launch, you know, of the three, of the or Series X, not even 360, wow. Of, uh, of the Series X, and, like, you know, it's one of those, like, let's just get it out, I feel like, and move yeah, on to I, some of the other yep. stuff that they have, you know, in the pipeline. Yeah, same thing. That I feel like they did that with uh, with Hellblade as well. Like yeah. it just came out. They were just like, okay, we just got to get it out. Let's get it out. Yeah, like, this is uh, and, and this at least, you know, I I finished Hellblade. That was a struggle because man, that. Yeah, yeah, I never played that one, but definitely have to talk about that like afterwards for sure. Yeah, Hellblade. Hellblade Two was it was very good visually, but man, there's a lot of pacing issues. So it was rough to finish. Even though it was it was like for me, it took like six and a half hours. It was a rough six and a half hours. 
Uh, <laughs> Diablo 4, Vessel of Hatred, the first expansion. Um, Diablo 4 came out, it was like lauded. Everyone was like, it's fantastic. And then nobody played it like two weeks later. Yeah. So, uh, and then I don't know many people who have picked it back up since then. I know a ton of people who played it, but none of them picked it back up. Uh, I'm hearing that it's getting a lot better. The new season is a lot better. Like, especially, I follow Paul, Paul Tassie on Twitter, you know, because he does the, the Destiny takes and stuff. Uh, but he's been playing that, and like he's like, oh, I really love it. Uh, but a lot, I think Skill Up 2 said it was really great. And hopefully Vessel of Hatred can get it back to feeling more like, you know, after Diablo 3 got fixed and all that stuff. Because uh, apparently that was, the you know, a lot of people are saying they didn't learn their lesson from Diablo 3. Which is wild because, you know, they made Diablo 3. It's not like another studio <laughs> made it. But hopefully this expansion can really can really do um, can really do some stuff for this game because, you know, it's now like a full live service, right? So they need that income from this game. Yeah. And they weren't getting it for a while. They're, 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 the numbers were low. And I know a lot of people, well, it's on Game Pass now, but the numbers still, as far as I know, um, are not super high. Uh, they, they really... Uh, oh no, they are. They're twenty four thousand and a forty thousand twenty four hour peak. That's actually pretty solid. You know, a lot of people. Are, it's not Call of Duty numbers. Like, come on, it's not Call of Duty, but forty thousand twenty uh, uh, twenty four hour peak. That's good. Yeah. So it looks like it is making a comeback, and hopefully this can add to that. And you know, those day one numbers, just like Destiny, almost broke their day one concurrent uh, this last week, but they had so many server issues that they they missed it by like three thousand players. Um, you know, here yeah. we, we can hopefully see that for Diablo. Um, oh, that was their all-time peak was a 24-hour peak on Steam. Wow. That's good. Yeah, they, they do look like they're doing good with that. Maybe I will check that out because it is on Game Pass. Who knows? I'll try out the, at least the base game. Um, and then we had your your biggest one, right? Oh, my God, dude. I tweeted it right before the showcase because I wanted to put it out there. I wanted to put it out I there in the universe that this was going to be shown. I literally saw that tweet the second the second this came on. It was yeah. so funny. I would I say, yeah, I had I had it on my computer and then I was looking at my phone at Twitter and I hear that and I see your tweet. It's like I need Fable today. I was, and we see Fable. I do because I was just so scared that like we're gonna get to a point where Fable we're like, is it coming out? Like what's going on, man? Because I know another another title that was teased at, at like what three, four years ago or five years ago at this point. God, it was so teased, long. and then last yeah. year it came out with the thing. Yeah. It looked like we saw a little more gameplay this time, but still not oh, very yeah. much. There was definitely right? a little bit more gameplay this, yeah, in was this more, one, but yeah. there was definitely... I, I want to say that like a lot of that is like in-game like cinematic, it looked like. I, I don't think that looked like anything that was like crazy CGI, or whatever the case may be, but... Yeah, in-engine cinematic. Yeah, it looked yeah. like there was a lot of in-engine footage there, which, I, regardless, I think the game looks good. And more importantly, like I, t I, told, I told this to you, Bobby, like it's funny like it's so freaking funny i thought they like really made sure to like nail that humor that like is known for the fable uh series so like i'm glad that they like made sure to stick to that and that's like a, a component that they're really kind of pushing with this you know with this next fable entry but i yeah. i'm down i'm i am so excited for this i cannot wait to play this freaking game i can't wait for it to come out like this for me is like the pinnacle of xbox right now i really want to play this game fable for me was like everything back when i first played that game on xbox 360 oh yeah I, yeah, yeah i remember that back in the day oh my god was, dude that, it, it that was, was great time. that was like my rpg like one of my favorite yeah. rpgs of all time so like it's, absolutely it's, it's really good to see obviously you come back and to just get another update on it because i was afraid we might not get an update on it and i was like man i hope we do because i don't want this game to be a game that takes like another two three years to come out and i'm like at this point i'm i'm hoping it's coming out soon and i'm at least glad we at least got a coming to 2025 at least they're, yeah. they're sticking to a year, which is next year. And, yeah. you know, they're hopefully going to stick that landing. You know, that, that that's always the question I think we have with Xbox. Like, are they going to stick it? Or are they are they going to hit that? They're going to hit that, you know, that marker that they're, that they're always pushing for. So it looks good, though. I think all in all, though, a lot of those snippets of what they've shown looked really good. A lot of a lot of the story looks just honestly really funny. The characters are hilarious. Um, I know we talked about how some of the stuff we're not too sure if it's like, you know, too much like gameplay versus like cinematic or whatever but yeah i'm i'm down man that's just at the end of it that it looks good it looks exciting the game the world looks really cool I, i'm loving it albion is back and i'm glad to see like the town and everything they they gave a little bit more of like interaction with like npcs and stuff like that i don't know if you caught that that was that was cool so like yeah, it, yeah. It, it's giving me that fable vibe and i'm and i'm just really excited for it to come to fruition at this point yeah one of the things that that i did absolutely love is like they they stuck to uh hey we're keeping this like a big third person actiony rpg right which is great because like yeah. 
you know, we know they have Bethesda, so they own Fallout and, and Starfield and all that. So they have those RPGs, but like from the core Xbox Studios, like the core Xbox Studios were just like first and third person shooters forever, right? And like because Fable just kind of died off, and so now that they're bringing that back, that's that's the stuff that I like to see. And it's the same thing why I said like. I'm willing to give Concord a chance because Sony hasn't put out their own FPS in a long time. So like, I'm at least willing to try it out. Doesn't mean it's going to be good, but I'm at least willing to try it out. And same thing with Fable here. Like this is Xbox actually kind of going back to, like you said, their roots with Fable and one of the core things that they used to have back in the day. Hopefully they can nail it. The only thing I did notice is that this game had some frame rate issues uh, in the cinematic and that's the one thing and now i know it's like at least a year away so hoping they get that fixed up but uh yeah that's that's the one thing i would worry about is i did notice like some some frame rate dips in this footage it doesn't mean it's gonna be like that at the end of the day but uh, that's just one small concern overall though this does look like it it could be good but i, I wish this this had a more concrete date but we got to talk more about concrete dates in a little bit uh, but yes, coming 2025 is good. And this comes down to, again, my thing. Um, and I actually said this about the, the latest Destiny expansion too, because it got delayed, right? And they put a filler year in, which was just terrible. But this, because they worked so long in this expansion, it ended up being the best one they ever did. If this needs to get delayed to 2026, delay it and let it be good, right? Don't don't put it out just to feed the Game Pass beast, please. Because like this, this could be fantastic. This could be like your game of the year. Yeah. And if you need to delay it, fine. Like, do it. Just just, just make yeah. sure that it happens. There, uh, there definitely is a point, though, that, like, I do want them to start hitting their, like, markers, too. Like, I, I, I don't... Like, if they have to delay it, 100% delay it. But, like, it would be nice if they can get to a point where they maybe can start, you know, start hitting these dates. Because I feel like that's probably one of the bigger complaints with Xbox right now is the constant delaying right this is not, hey well, we're getting yeah. a show now and it's not going to come out so no i was just saying like it, it would be nice if it gets to a point where like you know this doesn't get pushed to 2026 like you know get get that team together and hopefully you guys can get that you know that hit of uh, of a 2025 yeah i i'm just of the mindset like i agree with you well now here's the thing with with especially with blizzard activision bethesda there is no reason that they need to have anything pushed ever you yeah. know what i mean they have so much. Sh they spent a hundred million dollars, a hundred billion, excuse me, dollars almost over the past five years acquiring studios and talent and stuff. Um, that they have more IP than anybody, I think, right now. Uh, so, like, just let the smaller games have their time to shine, right? Yeah. Like South of Midnight. Like I want to see that. That like just let me play that. Like have that be and if. If Fable, yeah, let's let's say Fable's probably gonna come out like November or something. Yeah, I know? can see it. I can see it being around that. Uh, Definitely November yeah, next time. year. Yeah, holiday time, right? Uh, probably be after the next Call of Duty. Then they'll be like, oh, we have Fable by the way next month, so subscribe to Game Pass, right? And that'll be their big holiday system seller, hopefully. Yeah, I mean, because uh, the thing is too, like, keep in mind, like. They're really trying to push that subscription service, and so like I think that's the mindset too of like you go you want to hit these these markers and these dates because you're trying to get people to not get off of Game Pass. Like what's yep. gonna happen? What's gonna happen is I'm, I'm gonna get it off. I'm gonna get off because there's nothing to play. <laughs> so like yeah. that, that's the point. Like that's why I'm like you know I, I hope they get to a, a good cadence where they are like actually hitting their promised dates because this is how like a showcase like this. I can guarantee you got people to be like, hey, I'm going to now subscribe to Game Pass. This is good. Like, this is looking really good, right? Like, this is well, this yeah, showing here is really good. So, like, you know, don't, just uh, I just don't want to get to a point where, like, you know, like, oh, this got delayed now. Now this got delayed now. Now this got delayed. Like, you know, they started hitting that false promise, you know, whole thing again. So, like, you know, it, it, it's good. After this, it's like, okay, like, let's just keep it going now. Yeah. So, the the, the main thing, like, I, there's always, here's the thing, though, is there's always going to be people like me who are just... I'm always like budget minded with most of my stuff. Like I buy a game day one if I know I'm gonna play it and really enjoy it and I wanna show that support like about Rebirth. I haven't finished Rebirth yet, but I, I'm still making my way through it because it's a fucking 150 hour game. Yeah, I told you, <laughs> like, it's a, that's a chunky yeah, game. It's, it's a chunky boy, right? And it's like, uh, you know, with Game Pass though, if I like play and get through a game, and they don't have something that I'm like, that is my must play. Like Fable is is probably going to be my must play. It, it's looking really great. South of Midnight is a must play, right? There's a couple others that we'll talk about in a little bit that I'm like, I have to check that out when it's on Game Pass. So they're going to get me for like half the year next year. But if I finish that game 
and they don't have anything else that I must play, I'm just going to turn it turn it off. And there's always going to be right. people like me. That's that's one of the problems. So unless they can deliver literally a huge must play every month, they're always going to have that issue. And it's the same thing with like Netflix, you know, Hulu, they have the same issues. People just turn them off if there's not a show they want to watch, you know? Right. So it's it's that's one of the things they're fighting against all the time, which just it sucks about about Game Pass's plan because it's a good idea in, in a, uh, like in theory, but that's the reality of it. So to always people who are going to be like me who go, you know, something I want to play this month directly, like that I must play. I'm just going to turn it off. I'll wait yeah. till the next time I activate it, and then I'll check out that other game too. Uh, then we have Frag Punk. Uh, this is like their Concord. It's like a five v five, six v six team hero shooter thing. Yeah, I mean, which yeah. for Xbox, like, like I okay, it's an Xbox shooter. That looks super generic in my opinion. Like Concord looks generic too. Like we talked about how it's like, you know, Guardians of the Galaxy from from Timu, right? But like PlayStation doesn't have anything like that, so I'm willing to check it out. Whereas Xbox has a bunch of stuff that's I know is already better than this from just the looks of it. So like I don't have a desire to check this out personally. Um but yeah, it just gave Concord vibes of of Hero Shooter. Yep. They're trying to capitalize on that Valorant market for people who might be disillusioned with Valorant. Uh, not super uh, excited about. It. What do you think? Yeah, it's, that's that was it's, that was one of those games where I was like, you know, cool to see. I'm not, you know, it's not moving the needle for me, right? Especially yeah. after you giving me something like a fable, I'm like, all right, this is where I calm down. Like, this is like that calm down moment. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's just not a genre for me that I'm crazy about. Like, you know, the the heavy shooting type like that. So, um, yeah, you know, it's cool. It's just cool to see. You know, some more game or not Game Pass, but just more games coming uh, to the more Xbox games platform. coming. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that one didn't say coming to Game Pass. I noticed. So yeah, there is that's, no game pass that's weird. Um, Winter Burrow. This was the mouse survival game. Yep, about the all same right, feeling all here. All right, mo moving on. <laughs> about the same um, feeling here. This no, one looked look, good, though. This it it looked good. adorable, uh, but yeah, it, it's not for me, I don't think. Um, Annapurna Mixtape. Uh, this one looked kind of like, uh, like, I don't know, like Stranger Things vibe? Yeah. Right? It's, like, that's it looked, the vibe I got. It, it was, you know, it had like that cool retro, what is it, like 80s, maybe 70s yes, yes, aesthetic like, to it. Like late 80s? Or, yeah. yeah it, it, had that, like that. it had that like, cool, to, like, vibe. And it, it's Annapurna. I love it. Like, Annapurna is yes. honestly one of my favorite, favorite studios out there. They just make some of the yes. best story games. They and this is one of those games where, like, you just know, dude, it's going to hit on some type of cool story beat. And I'm yeah. so excited for when we get to that. I, I really think that this one is on my must play list, right? I yeah, love the art 100%, 100%. style. It's it's almost like the Redfall art style, like the arcane art style, but it's more stylized to really be like like we said yeah. the '80s, right? And I think that's very cool, very fun. Uh, it's actually it's got to be the '90s, right? Because mixtape is on a CD, so it's got to oh, be okay. the mid '90s at 90s, least, yeah. right? Yeah. Like Which be, still yeah. makes sense because, like, the 90s is that era still before, like, yeah. everyone had a cell phone. And, like, you know, I think my mom, because she worked, you know, across the bridge, she worked over, in, like, we were in the, in the Bay Area. So she worked over on the peninsula. She had a cell phone just in case anything happened. Um, you know, she needed, you know, like, her car broke down so she could call us on the road, right? But, right. like, that, I think she got that in 98 or 99. That was, like, you know, before that, that era of everyone's got a smartphone. So you could go out on adventures in the middle of the night and, you know, do dumb things as a kid. It was a good time. Um, then we had Microsoft Flight Sim. Uh, that was a flight sim. Yep. I was going to say you wanted to go over that one. Yeah. This I, is I, like. It's great they get I, those updates, but like, you know, I'm, I'm good. You know? Well, this is, this is a new game, right? So this is a whole new game. Yeah. Oh, it's is got, it a whole new game? I thought it was just yeah. It's a whole there. no. It's a whole new game. It's got new cool. like jobs you can do, so you can be like a person who puts out fires in the helicopter or whatever. Okay. And that's awesome. And the technology of Flight Simulator is cool. It's just I don't care about a Flight Simulator at all. And to me, it's like that's super. It's like the only thing more boring to me than that is Valorant. Um, you know, like it's just eh, okay, cool. Like you just want to sit in an airplane flying from Chicago to right. fucking L.A. for two and a half hours in a game fun like all right uh then we had elder scrolls online celebrating the 10 year anniversary for a limited time play all the dlc for free that's pretty big pretty big i yeah. might check that out because i know i know chin has played that forever he's been playing that for i yeah. think like eight of the last 10 years so uh yeah. you know that's a, that's a big deal especially if you are someone who maybe fell off of it and you could just go back and like catch up on on the story yeah. and whatever like and it's the same thing. It's the same it came out the same time around Destiny, which is wild. Um, because Destiny's been out for ten years this year. 
Yeah, I was and, saying, uh, this for me is very similar to uh, like 76, man. Those are the, these are two yeah, MMOs yep. that I got into at one point, kind of fell off and probably yeah, not yeah. going to get back in. I'm ready for Elder Scrolls 6 though, man. When's it there coming, Bobby? Bobby, when is it coming? Uh, I guarantee you they're pivoting to Fallout right now with the show. They're like, we got to get yeah, Fallout in the next three years. So we you're telling it. me, Bobby, maybe another 20 years. Like maybe another <laughs> you're 20 years. You're telling me there's a chance, You're telling man. me there's a chance, man. I'll play it before <laughs> 50. That's what, that's what yeah, you're trying to tell me, man. Not before I'm 50, but oh, yeah, man. before you're 50. That's funny, dude. Uh, <laughs> next was Life is Strange. Yes. And this is yes. big because Square Enix, you know, they talked, what, last year, right? They said, hey, yeah. we're, we're working with Xbox more. And they put out, they put out 14. Which hasn't apparently hasn't been doing great. I don't know if that's because it was free on Game Pass, but it's like it's not it's not in their top games or even close to it anymore, uh, which is wild because uh, yeah. 14 is insanely popular. But Square Enix is like you said, seeking that multi-platform strategy. So they're doing some marketing here with Xbox for the next Life is Strange. Life is Strange right. is a fantastic. I haven't played them. Uh, I played a little bit of the first one. Yeah, but I've I've heard nothing but excellent thing and what i played was great i just i yeah. fell off it and it's like ghost of tsushima where now i have to go back and start it over if i'm gonna do it yeah you know what i mean oh, like dude. it's because it's been so long since i played it i gotta start the whole thing over to get the whole experience this one is special this when when they showed this i was kind of like I, i'm not gonna lie i saw a deck i saw deck nine i saw square enix and i my first mm. thought was oh new life is strange game has to be a new life is strange game yeah yeah, yeah. and so when they went through the character I thought I heard the name Max, and then I kept thinking, oh, interesting that they would choose another pro tag with the same um, name as the very first Life is Strange character, Max. And so I was like, wow, that's interesting that they would, you know, go with that decision, right? Same name. And then they showed, like, her little gimmicky power. And, you know, that in Life is Strange, that is kind of like the thing where it's like, you know, the main protagonist just all of a sudden gets these weird abilities, right? They can either mm. sense emotion, right? In some of the games, or in Max's case, rewind time. And so there's always yeah. something. And so, pretty much, it got to the point where, like, this game, I think it, like, had, like, a, a pop-up where it was like, yeah, like, you know, basically, like, you know, you're, you're back replaying as Max Caulfield. And I was like, wait, wait a minute, what? Like, this is, like, Max from the original first Life is Strange. They're doing another story with her where she's older. Yeah. In a whole new area. Like, we don't, yep. I, I don't know where this is taking place or what's going on. I don't know if this is still in Blackwell. Like, that was the whole premise, like, the, the location of the first game and everything. But... I'm so excited to learn more of this story and see what more of this is about. Um, again, she, I feel like for a lot of people, including myself, she's like one of my most like beloved characters of all time. I, I love the first Life is Strange game. I love the series, but the first one is just is special to me because it was just one of the first games I've ever played that were that were you know like a narrative first type of game, right? So mm -hmm. it's all about decision making, right? What are you picking? What is the outcome you're going to go with? The, all that stuff. And yeah, so you're like, really playing for the story, really. Yeah, is, yeah. Is, so like yeah. The, for me, and I think a lot of people like this might have been like their first entryway into those types of games. And so to just do another Life is Strange game and then to bring back that character for a new story is crazy. And on top of that, it's kind of like that's the first I've ever done that. So like it's kind of cool to see like you. I don't know. I've always had this thing of like that. This is going to be kind of like an anthology type of series, right? Where it's always a new storyline, a new thing, but people with new abilities. So them to go and just make a sequel, or not even a sequel, I don't know how you want to word this, but like, I, in a way, maybe a sequel, I don't know. But bringing back a, that character, Max, for a new game with new powers, too. It's like not even the same power. It, it seems like it's new power. She's not rewind time. It looks like she's going into other, um, what was it, like a, like a multiverse? Other realities. Yeah, like other yeah. reality type of yeah. thing. So it's it's really like interesting to see what they're doing with this. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited, as you can tell. I don't know about you, Bobby. <laughs> Uh, no, I mean, I, I want to check it out. Like I said, I, it's one of those franchises I need to go back into and really play through. Because, like, I've always, like, I played through part of the first one, and then for whatever reason, I fell off of it, just never went back. And then I've always heard over the years people go, like, oh, the new Life is Strange is so fantastic. And these games, they always win awards. They always have people just, like, raving about how good they are. Every single one of them, right? And it's like, I'm like, damn, I got to get back into that. I got to go back and, like, play through the whole mm. thing. And I just never do it. Because I get caught up with something. It's one of those things I got to get into it and like sit down and make myself do it. Like, it's like I said, just like Ghost of Tsushima. I told Talon, like, hey, when things slow down this summer before the fall pickup, like after Elden Ring, I'm going to try and get back to Ghost of Tsushima, right? Yeah. And like actually get through that whole game. Like, I loaded up my file yesterday and I was like, I have like 56 hours in this game. And I just never finished it. I just fell off it for whatever reason. I was like, I got to go back, start over, and really like finish this game. Like, so this Life is Strange is one of those franchises I need to do that too. Um, just get back in there, check it out. Cause like I like when when I saw what was it True Colors was the one like two years ago, three two years ago something like that. That one I was like, oh that looks really good. And then yeah. I just I was like, oh well, let me play the other ones first. And I never did. 
So I never, and it's like I, I just forget about it until I see another one come out, and I go, "Damn, I gotta check that out." Lethal, you gotta you gotta hold me accountable with this one. <laughs> Life is strange. Be like, "Hey, go play Life is strange." Honestly, I mean, for the, definitely play the first one. I just feel like that first one is like everybody should at least experience one of them. And if there's one experience, in my opinion, the first game is just yeah. it, just to this day, I think it's just a game that I, I can replay it and get sad all over again. It's one of those. It's it's, it's really good. Um, I love I love. And then Bobby, on top of that, it's coming this year, man. What a surprise! I think that was one of those like really sort of like lot like surprises for me that I was like, whoa, this is a cool announcement. A very surprised. Like, hey, by the way, this is coming out this year, this October. So really cool. Not a Game Pass. Not a Game Pass Not game. Not a Game Pass. Not a Game yeah. Pass game, but I have no problems buying the new Life is Strange. I'm excited. Yeah, I, li- I have Life is Strange True Colors on Steam even. I think I got it in a bundle, like a, like a humble bundle or something. Yeah. So it's like, and I probably, on, on if they've given it away on Epic, I have. <laughs> you know, they give it away everything. <laughs> right, right. Like, I probably have Life is Strange on there. Uh, but I, 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 I we'll have to look. Um, the next up, hold on, let me get back to this list. Next up was Indiana Jones and the first person shooter. Uh, no, Indiana Jones and the Great Circle. This one is still scheduled for 2024. I've heard yeah. a lot of people like Maddie plays. He said many times, he's like, this getting delayed. And I, I don't know why he thinks that because they, they seem pretty confident in it. But it's, it's coming yeah. 2024. I say they they're showing more and more of it too, you know. It, it, like yeah. we're getting new story bits, new environments. Like the game looks like it's ready to go. Like I, I know we, I, know, I we might be saving this for later, but you know, there really is a topic of conversation of like, why didn't you guys stick a date on it then, right? Like if this is, if this is confident, and it's there. I, I wonder what is holding them back from putting that date. Maybe there's one or two things, right, that they're just slightly holding off on. Who knows? Um, yeah. But you know, for me, Indiana Jones, I'm not. That's not my. You know, I was a little bit past that time. That's some more my dad, I think. But I know there. This is a beloved character. I I know that much, right? This is a pretty big, like a pretty big series. Like, so I uh, I don't know. I'm not too crazy for it, but you know, it's on Game Pass, man. Right? That's one of those where hey, it's on Game Pass. Maybe I'll, I'll give it a shot. Yeah, I you know I'm I'm that generation where the first thing Anna Jones came out right before I was born, right? Yeah. So I grew up seeing the movies, right? Like my parents had it because um, it was a big it was a big deal back in the day, yeah. and I I love Indiana Jones. Uh, those first three movies are still movies that I will sit down and watch if I see them on, or sometimes it's like if I find them somewhere, I'll I'll turn them on. It is just great, uh, fun time. It's just like back when movies were just fucking fun, you know, like it's those old, uh, you know, those old eighties like action, not eighties adventure movies, right? Like Goonies stuff like that. This is really uh, classic adventure fun time stuff the, like i said the only thing i don't like about this is the fps i feel like i, I want to yeah. see indiana jones the whole time i want to see the jacket and the hat yep, yep like yep. that was my it, complaint too yeah that's my complaint like and and the other thing is like man you guys could have just challenged uncharted we don't have an uncharted and this is uncharted right like indiana jones is asking to the, be uncharted and the thing and, is the the right sorry real quick the writing looks really good too like yeah, that, it does. That, that snippet from today that they showed us i, yeah. I was laughing i thought it was funny i was like dude they they got something here and it, and like and I, I know you're gonna get more into it it is kind of like sad that like man i i kind of wish this was you know trying to go for more of that third person uh you know perspective and that type of adventure style um but you know i think they really are trying to go for something unique here with the whole like you know the whip and everything so uh, yeah. You know, we'll see. But go ahead. I know you're gonna go more. Uh, I, yeah, that's the main thing with me is like having a, a such an iconic character. You know, like I, I, you know, maybe this is a bad example, but like imagine Wolverine, right? The well, we know the Wolverine game is coming out, and it's Omniac is like, by the way, it's gonna be first person. It's like, okay, but I want to see like, you know, like the, the the you know Wolverine's like chops. Right, and his hair sticking up, and his like, you know, when he wears the hat too, like, you know, I want to see that. Right, it's the same thing. Like, like it's just, it just feels like it takes away from the character, and it's trying to like, you know, when I'm playing an Indiana Jones game, I want to play Indiana Jones. I don't want it to be me as Indiana Jones. I want to, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's what it feels like for me. And I know it's because it's machine games, and they're you know the Wolfenstein guys, so they're just using the Wolfenstein tech to do it and all whatever. But like, it just it feels. Like they had the chance to step up and challenge Sony in their arena, especially with such a huge license. And they just like copped out by going, Hey, we'll have machine do it and let them do their like Wolfenstein first person shooter thing. And again, like with it being Wolfenstein, it's like, what makes this really that different from a Wolfenstein game other than the cutscenes? Because you're still killing Nazi. You know, it's like, <laughs> it's like, it's not any different. 
Uh, I, I feel like they were just like, hey, Machine Games made a game with Nazis. Indiana Jones has Nazis. Let's give them Indiana Jones, right? Instead of like, you know, really thinking about like how to not how to do it. Uh, I'm gonna check it out because I love Indiana Jones. I at least want to see how it how it plays. Cause maybe it does play good, but like, yeah, that whipped first person gameplay looks really weird. And then the other thing is like coming out of a first person and then going into third person cutscenes is always weird. Yeah, I, I always for, I, mean? I always forget always that. Weird. See, I I forgot, I forgot about them. Glad you mentioned it, but I do forget this game does try to do some really cool, interesting things of like. I think it's first person, right? Like majority of the time, cutscenes, yeah. right? It's no longer the case. But then there's even moments I think in like gameplay too, right? Like if you're like yeah. climbing, it shifts to third person, right? When you're yeah, like yeah. walking across a beam, it shifts to third person. Like it does do weird thing, and, and maybe that is that's just them trying to be artistic and maybe just creative and trying to do something a little bit different, which I do admire and I, and I respect. But I think I'm like you, where I'm like, man, it's funny that and it's a it's a good series, right? It, it, it yeah. could have been a really good series to really push for that that Uncharted style you know game exactly exactly i really think that that's that's my biggest complaint about it is like it it, it just it screams of you know like uncharted and right we all know uncharted was just sony's indiana jones like let's let's be real that was them trying to make an indiana jones game and now xbox has the opportunity to make an indiana jones game and i i don't know a single person who's like fuck yeah first person indiana jones like everyone's like it, it's weird like and it, that's that's only like I said. I love Indiana Jones' character franchise, so I'm gonna check it. I like. I'm not. We're not talking about those last yep. two movies, but the original trilogy, man. That's that's part of my childhood. Like, I fucking love it. And this looks like it's it's reaching back to that, which is awesome. But I just needed to needed to really deliver, and I'm hoping it feels good. I mean, Wolfenstein feels good to play, but like I said, with, with just how Indiana Jones works as a character and stuff like that, it's kind of strange. Up next, we had Mecha Break, which is like Voltron. Yeah. Gundam, Gundam. Shit. I I thought it was like a little like Gundam-y. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it looks looks cool. I really like the flying stuff, like when there were planes. It looked really rad. It's like fast paced, super you know crazy. It almost reminded me of Anthem, but faster. Where there's like yeah. kind of like going boom, 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 like able to really control. Some people the were line. saying like they felt like it was, had a little bit of a moments of like a armor uh, armor core. So armor core. Yep. Yep. There's a good, there's a good, too, there's a good yeah. mix up. This it's a fun little you know mix up. Uh, but yeah, I mean that, that looks like a looks like a Gundam kind of combat, you know, like team combat game. It's cool if you if you're down with that. It says beta coming August 2024. That I might check out because uh, it'll be on PC. So I don't know, if, like I don't know how many of these games are like third party going to PlayStation Two and they just have the marketing rights because obviously they weren't gonna put you know PlayStation on the on the end cards. Uh, but it is coming to PC, so I'll absolutely check it out there. Uh, next up was a interesting one Wu Chang. Mm -hmm. yeah this i feel like is the every showcase has a yes. Sekiro. you said it has the every like, showcase has, has a soul always, like every always single one is like in every this showcase is, now this is the Sekiro one <laughs> so yeah. um Chang cool. fallen feathers it looks really good the, art the, the, the thing is really bobby cool. they always look cool though that's the that's, that's they like, always do look that's cool. also part of the problem bobby is that like there's not one where i'm like nah i could pass on it i i am suckered into all of them they they're always cool like there's it's yes. rare that like it's just not cool. Like it, they're always cool. And this one, for example, looked really cool. Looked really interesting. Yeah. Um, it, you the, know. the art style is again. It's very dark. This one. This one's like probably the closest I've seen to feeling like Sekiro in the art. Yeah, style. So, it was like, a little bit more of a faster pace. It, it kind of reminded me of like Wulong. Yeah. I played Wulong. Mm -hmm. I like that one. Yeah, a lot. yeah, yeah. So it has like that too. Wulong. I said it to it. Um, but no, it, it looks cool. The character at first, I was like, oh, cool. She has like a cool, like weird sleeve of like power thing and then it turned out she looked like she might be also like half demon or something i was like okay this yeah, is something. this is interesting I'm, I'm, again I'm, I'm always in like i'm always down and of course this is gonna be on game pass so guess who's yeah make so sure they have game, game pass yeah. i will you get if, if i'm having game pass that's one of the yeah. months i'm having it yep. um but yeah this it looks really cool it, it very much that you know that like from soft horror vibe with a lot of it like you said with the demon stuff it just yeah overall this is one I'm, I'm definitely keeping on my radar coming 2025 uh, up next we need to talk about this um avowed mm -hmm. this was huge showing but the one thing i was talking to my brothers because uh, we were all just downstairs i was grabbing you know a quick drink before I came up to record and i was like avowed um they showed a ton of cut scenes and like the story stuff they held off on showing gameplay because last time when they showed gameplay in that showcase, people shit all over it. And 
the, this time, like, which tells me like they haven't made any adjustments to it. They're yeah. just hiding it now, which is not great. Like, I love Obsidian, and I think it's it's probably going to be good. Like, I didn't think it looked you know terrible last time, but I was like, oh, you know, looks like it could be a little rough. But the fact that they didn't have the confidence this time to come out and show that gameplay and go, okay, you know, we heard we made some tweaks based on what everyone was saying. That that kind of says something to me. And this might be that like Microsoft's like, no, we're not giving you time to push it back. Yeah, I was right? going to say, this that, that's what I'm this thinking were, too. It's at that right, point like, where it's like ready to ship it. It's got to go out. Yeah. And so Microsoft's like, no, you're not getting any more time. Which is, you know, when I said with Fable, like push that shit back if you need to. That's what I, that's what I meant. Like, I know they want to hit the cadence, and I know you, right, you express, like, hey, I want it as a Game Pass consumer. I want them hitting that cadence, so I stay subscribed, so I have something to stay subscribed for. And I agree with that, but they, I, like, at the same time, if, if this is, I don't know, if this is, like, how it's going to go, that's what get, leaves me worried, man. You know? And like I said, the, the cutscenes and stuff all look fantastic. All of it looks great. But the fact that they were not confident enough to really showcase the combat and showcase like hey we we yeah we heard your feedback we've made some tweaks in the last year because it was a year ago like if not longer like that they showed it last time that speaks volumes to me and i'm i'm really concerned about avowed at this point um hopefully it, it comes out and it's it's solid yeah but i i i that's the one of the you know another disappointing thing for me was that they really went to great lengths to hide the actual gameplay this time. When we already, I mean, yeah, I know we already saw it, but like, again, with all the criticism that it got last time, you'd think that they'd be like, okay, like, we got you this time. We're going to show you it's better. And they, they they really just didn't do that. And and this is the same thing with Indiana Jones. We talked about this right before the show. They both say coming 2024. Avowed should have a date by now. And Indiana Jones should have a date by now, right? Yeah, they should. Like, like, especially it's because if it's coming twenty twenty four, these should definitely step date. Like, like, unless what are they coming? December thirty first, both of them. Like, when know. are they coming? Yeah, the question like, is, you're when not, are, if they're not making the announcement here, when are they going to make it? Yeah, it's either it's either they're it's either they're yeah, like it may, maybe they're just like it'll be like remember last year they did the things right after the show they released yep. interviews and all that. And they did that after the the quote unquote business update earlier this year, right? Um, like maybe they just released interviews with it after or something. I don't know, but it's just, it seems really weird that you wouldn't like these are two of our biggest, most anticipated things for this year. We're halfway through the year and they don't have actual concrete release dates yet. And maybe yeah. that's why you know that's what like I said, like Maddie Plays has said many times. He's like Indiana Jones getting pushed to next year. Maybe that's why he thinks that because he's don't have dates but like man like i need to know like am i getting game pass in september for about am i getting it in november for indiana jones i don't fucking know i have hopefully, no idea hopefully they're like close <laughs> hopefully they're home. close like yeah. i would i mean like, it's not that great for them but i mean at this point maybe it's better to just drop them close i don't know like maybe no, you, can't, you can't do that because they don't have they need to have breathing room like that was part of their yeah their issue but, I mean, last time they I, but dropped it's like, games, but if, that's it's like, just, if one's coming out let's say like september like when's the other one gonna come out october you're gonna wait till well, they, i think they have september and then they have yeah. like let's say they have a vow in september they have yeah. call of duty in october and then they have indiana jones in november right the actual paying custom the people who buy games right for pc and xbox they're not gonna buy all three of those yeah. one after the other so what's gonna happen is a vow is gonna get the shaft on that because they'll be like, oh, I'm not going to buy that. Like, I'll wait till later or play in a game pack. Right? Whereas people, like, might buy Indiana Jones. And, and the thing, you know, we already talked about the Call of Duty crowd's going to buy Call of Duty. Like, right. that game is like, it's like, you know, gotcha players. They're gotcha pulls. You know, it, it, it's, <laughs> it's, it's happening no matter what anybody says, right? No matter how. Right. <laughs> uh, but yeah, let's, let's hope that we get those dates soon, like, like this week. Because <laughs> if they really need to be more upfront with this, uh, I mean, we got so few dates. The ones we got were like it, the games within the next month. That was about it for this whole thing. So, uh, next up was the Rebellion title, Adam Fall. This literally, it felt like a mix of what was that one game that was like the Russian game? Oh, Atomic Heart. Oh, okay. No, no, Atomic Heart. It felt like Atomic Heart meets Horizon, is what this felt. I'm not gonna lie, I can't, I can't even remember too much of this game. 
This is one of yeah, those that it was, maybe it, it flew was by super, at that point. I was like, well, it was just like it was like super generic. Like I yeah. saw it, and I was like, okay. Like I even think like like the target, like when the role was like target acquired. I was like, I'm pretty sure I've heard that in another game. Is it like a royalty free like robot voice thing that right. they're using? I don't know what. It, maybe it's good. It's coming 2025. I don't know who it's gonna appeal to. It looks really strange. There's people with bows and arrows, like a fantasy, and then like an outdoor yeah. camp, like a fantasy thing. And then you see like a city with robots and a dude in a hazmat suit walking through like a cave. Like it, and I'm like, who, who is this for? What is this game? I, I don't know. So that that was a really weird one to me. Um, Assassin's Creed Shadows, Lethal. Dude, I'm not going to lie. I was kind of shocked that this game was shown here. I thought it was going to be shown off. Uh, I mean, at least the next glimpse of it, right? The, another look at it, I thought was going to be at what's it called? Um, Ubisoft Forward, because Ubisoft Forward is tomorrow. Yeah. So I was a little, I was a little shocked that like, oh, okay, they're giving something to Xbox to show off a little bit more of the game. And they're I'll be honest, to, yeah, yeah, and I'll be honest, I was already sold on it when they first showed it off. Like, this is probably the first Assassin's Creed in a, in a minute that I've, I'm genuinely like really excited for. And mm -hmm. so, you know, it kind of just reaffirmed the fact that, like, hey, man, I'm, I'm really, you know, I'm really excited for this one. This looks like another Assassin's, good Assassin's Creed character. Um, or two, right? This is actually the cool one where it has two characters. Um, so I'm, I'm honestly down. I'm, I'm excited. You know, it, it, it's not like it's a new thing, but it's a cool thing to just see more of it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to check this out. I haven't, like, I played a little bit of Origins, and I just didn't gel with it. Um, and then I, I heard that odyssey was the best what i heard but my cousin has been playing uh Valhalla. he my cousin i have mentioned many times on this channel my cousin basically stopped gaming in 2017 like PUBG came out and he's played PUBG for seven years uh but he was telling me the other day like he, he stopped he played like a zelda game you know once he played mario or something but like his main thing is you know he, did, he plays those big things that we played you know as kids like zelda and mario uh and then he plays PUBG. that's basically all he plays <laughs> uh, but he was telling me he's like I've been playing Assassin's Creed Valhalla and I love it. And I was like, really? And he's like, yeah, I just play a little bit of time, just kind of go through. And then I saw Gene Park say the same thing, where he's like, you know, Valhalla is like if you treat it like a single player live service, where you just log in for an hour, uh, hour or two, and you knock a little bit out, then whenever you're ready, you log in for another hour or two, and you just keep it going like that. He's like, it, it turns into a really great experience instead of you trying to sit there and go, okay, let me beat this game and going in for like four or five hours six hours and go okay i gotta slog through you know endlessly so maybe it's just a way of like thinking because like i'm from the, the old school assassin's creed like got the oh my god the dude. xbox Ex trophy for the 100 percent on on assassin's creed 2 as Ezio, right yeah, I, like, I was gonna say like the Ezio days man that, that's always well, gonna be the dude, I was, assassin's creed so I, I, I'm, playing, I'm excited that hopefully this goes back in that direction i've been playing black flag lately oh yeah that you're game's going back fantastic in. dude <laughs> oh, like I was like I forgot how good this is. Like it's so good, and I'm like, I'm. It's so fun and so good that I'm sitting through 30 FPS to play this game because I don't Stop. I don't have it on PC. <laughs> I'm playing it on PS4. And I'm like, ugh, I hate that. I hate how it looks. Goddamn, yeah. it's fun. Like I'll definitely be excited to see, you know, more from this at the Ubisoft Forge because you know they're gonna do a whole breakdown. They're gonna show more. Yeah, they're so gonna do. Yeah, that's absolutely. gonna be the real big like you know. Do, do I play this day one? You know, is this going to be? Uh, do I hold off? Like that's going to be the bro kickers when I get to see more of what this game looks like uh, uh, from gameplay perspective. Yeah, and I think I think that really could be, really could be a a good return to form for Assassin's Creed because Mirage, like it did well enough in sales. They said, right? They said it actually did really well, but like everyone I heard was like, oh, like the, that old formula doesn't work anymore. Now. Which I, I don't know. I think I think because they went too far back, they went to like Assassin's Creed one and two, versus the evolved systems of like three, four Syndicate, right? Yeah. Like, if they had gone back to more of that, I think Mirage would have done better. But let's see what Shadows delivers, because like I'm really excited about this. Like everyone's wanted the Assassin's Creed in, in feudal Japan forever, and again, you know, I think I tweeted earlier, maybe I I, I know I, I wrote, I don't remember if I, if I said it. Uh, like Ghost of Tsushima really kicked off this feudal Japan kick. Like every game, every year, there's a new feudal Japan game, right? We just got like Rise of Ronin, yeah, uh, and Sasuke Shadows, and then there another one. Like there's another one that's that's here somewhere or something. I don't remember. I but, don't remember. There's a couple men. Uh, yeah, we're just going on the list. We go, oh, we're almost done. So yeah, it's like every 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 thing has like a feudal Japan game now every year, 
and it's like wild that since Ghost of Tsushima dropped that this has happened more and more. Uh, Stalker 2 just literally looks like Metro to me, and a lot of people are excited, <laughs> but I, like, I, I'm over just like, I don't know, unless you're really, like you give me like Judas, like Judas I'm excited about. Because Ken Levine's like really great at telling stories. Yeah. Yeah, Ken Levine's like a dick to his, to his team, and it's very uncool. But I feel like now at this point, if you work for Ken Levine, you gotta know. You know what I mean? Like you gotta right. know that he's got that reputation, and like you gotta know what you're getting into. Um, so, uh, Stalker Two, it looks really, really good. It visually looks great, but it just it looks like an FPS campaign, I guess, uh, in, in Chernobyl. Uh, so it, it just reminds me of Metro. Yeah, I mean, it, like, it looks it looks cool. I mean, I remember watching it at first, being like, "Wait, I, I, this is when I was confused if this was either." Um, State of Decay, or was the Stalkers? And I was like, okay, yeah, no. okay I was yeah. like, I was like, this is the Stalkers game because you know, there's they're a little bit similar in how they uh, like appearance wise, I guess. For me, at first point, because I couldn't remember like what was the like synopsis of each of the other one, and then I remembered, okay, no, Stalkers, Stalkers is the one that has like the crazy weird stuff going on, whereas the other one is a zombie. I was like, all right, I got it down. Like now, I now I know it. But um, yeah, I mean, you know, you said it, you said it best. You know, this reminds me of like Metro. This this yeah. almost reminded me a little bit at first of uh, what's it called um. Atomic Heart at first, because I was like, is this is a little bit of that kind of aesthetic to it? Not the craziness of what that game is, but like, I don't know. It just, the uh, appearance at first glance gave me something kind of similar to that. But, you know, this has a date now, and I think this is one of those games, Bobby, if I'm not mistaken, that people are like, we need, to, where's the date on this? When is this coming out? Yes, yeah, because like, it was hey, supposed man. to come out like January or February. Yeah, or so now it's coming out September 5th. There we go. Yeah, and that, that's good. This, again, dates. And it's one of those things about the industry that, this is sort of things that I feel like Xbox is super behind the times on. And this is why we feel like Sony hasn't had many huge announcements lately is Sony feels like they have adapted to the new kind of advertising meta that a lot of companies are advertising in gaming are doing now where it's like, we're going to show it if it's coming out in within the year. And then we're not wasting time on like the CGI trailer of a game that's coming out three years from now to get people hyped because then people build up these unreasonable expectations, right? And then it comes out and it's like, it's mid. Like Hellblade, look at Hellblade. Like if Hellblade, they were just like, you know, they waited until like last year. So Hellblade 2 is coming, they show it off and then they establish expectations really quickly. Hey, we're making this a small game like the first one, but it's gonna be a big, you know, bigger, better experience, whatever. Cool, that game would have, you know, it, I guess it fared fine. It's like Starfield, where it's very divisive. It's either really high or really low scores. But you know, it, it's just one of those things where having those dates be close feels better. And and I feel like Microsoft, that's like one of the last things they need to do. And we'll talk about this, especially with the last announcement. Then we have the Series X digital announcement. Right? Cool. Uh, the one terabyte Series S white. Cool. Bobby. And then where's the my handheld? Series- Where's my Series handheld, X. Uh, this is not the, what I was hoping to see, Bobby. This isn't even the refresh. Where's it, it's not the refresh. It's not the what's it called? The handheld. What is this, Bobby? Uh, this this is. I don't know. I don't know who this is for. Who's, I was not, gonna say who who is this for then, Bobby? Like we know they're who not this selling for, the consoles man? they have. Why make more? I don't know man. versions. And it's like, look, I want them to be successful, and hopefully, like with all these games coming, like they're gonna start seeing people buy more. And I feel like Call of Duty is gonna make a little bit of a dent. I don't think it make it like if if this was five years ago, Call of Duty would would have made this generation different, right? When this gen started, they had Activision. Absolutely would have made this gen different. Now though, PlayStation's so entrenched that they, I mean, Phil Phil said it what last year, right? He's like, we we can't out console Sony or Nintendo because now, like, oh, cool. I was thinking about buying a new game console. Hey, Bill, I was gonna buy a new game console, right? Let's say we're talking to our friends. Hey, Bill. I was thinking about buying a new game console. I know you're into games. Uh, which one should I get? Well, I have a PlayStation. Oh, you got a PlayStation, Bill? Okay, I'll get a PlayStation. Like, that's what's happening now. Yeah. Right? Because, I mean, we're seeing like three or four to one sales every month. Because people's friends have PlayStation. So now they're buying PlayStation. Because that's where they can play with their friend. You know? And it's just... And, and their friends go, hey, you know, we're gonna have these cool games. It's got you. Got, you can borrow my Spider Man. I have Spider Man right. on disc. You can borrow it, right? Like, it, it sucks because like Phil might have been right about that, 
So why waste more money producing more varieties of consoles that people might not buy? That seems really weird. And you're right. Like we heard so much. Like I heard someone yesterday going like, no, they're ta- they're going to be ta- unveiling the handheld tomorrow. Like I, like insider saying that yesterday. Like we're going to see it tomorrow. Like uh, who is it? Insider Games? I think to that. We should see it tomorrow. And we didn't. And now it's really weird because I was like, okay, how are they going to do the handheld? Are they going to really eat the loss like Steam? Because like Steam, Steam, they got you. Right, because Steam sells so much, you know, so much property. Like they're like, yeah, we'll we'll take the loss on the thing because you're gonna buy. It. But you know, how many games I bought since I got a Steam Deck, lethal. No, dude, dude, Steam like, Deck, I have, same Deck changed the way for a lot of us, man. <laughs> a dude, lot of I us have, I, these games. I have in my Steam library now. It's not, it's nothing compared to a lot of Steam gamers. I have 317 games. I had before I got my Steam Deck, I had like 70, right? Because now I see like, oh. Like, oh, there's a thing where it's like a bunch of indies for like 20 bucks. You get like 20 indies for 20 bucks. Cool. I'll buy it. Right. I have the games that like, I have tons of games that I haven't played. I have tons of, you know, like games that I probably wouldn't sit and play on a console, but I'll play them on a Steam Deck because it's like a cool, fun little handheld, small, you know, indie game that's kind of dumb or whatever. And I'll like, check it out. Cool. That that's how portables change. You know, they change gaming. That's why so many people own a switch and they own multiple of them. Right, because one's the home switch and one's the like I'm going out on the bus. Right, you ask Talon how many people he, right. he's playing a switch every day. He's like uh, every day on the train I see like ten people because it's just easier for a lot of people. So I don't know what they were thinking with this. I mean, I guess cool. Like if you want a cheaper Series X, four fifty for the all digital. But I, me personally, unless I absolutely have to, I'm not buying an all digital console. And even then, I might not. I would just stick with Steam. You know, like everybody's eventually bringing their games to Steam nowadays. You know, in PlayStation, if I have to wait a couple years, you know, if they if they go all digital, then I'm just going to wait till it's on Steam. So it's as simple as that. And, uh, but they do have the two terabyte, which is uh, 600, which is cheaper than buying the expansion drive. So that's a good deal, at least if you want a two terabyte console. But pricing a console $100 over a PS5 is a bold fucking strategy, Microsoft. That's really, really weird. <laughs> just really weird. Uh, and then the one more thing was Gears. The big one, think? Bobby. The, the big, big one. one. This is the big one. Uh, E-Day. Right? Is this a prequel? Yes. He, this is a prequel. I mean, yeah. I, this <laughs> caught me off guard, Bobby. It caught me off guard because I, I thought I saw a young Marcus and I was like, interesting. I was like, what's what's going on with this, man? Yep. And then it turned out, oh, they're going for a prequel style. Because then I saw Dom and I was like, well, this is completely unexpected. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so go ahead. I'll say yeah. Go ahead. You go. Go. I was gonna say this is, but this is uh, what I just talked about. This is the exact definition of what I was talking about. The let's show the CGI trailer. No release date. No gameplay. This is the hype. Like let people know this exists. And I know why. Like, but you don't do this as marketing anymore because now people are like, Gears is coming. And then like next year they're gonna be like, when, when's Gears coming? And then two years they're gonna be like, where's Gears? Why are we still waiting for Gears? Because if they show this, they have no gameplay, no nothing aside from the CGI like this. This game is at least three years away. Think so? Yeah, it's 2027. Yep. Yeah. They have nothing. They have nothing. This is the this is the hey we're we're in the earliest of pre-production if you're lucky. That and that's that's yeah. what I'm talking about with like you show and like don't get me wrong like it's cool for a new Gears like it's awesome but this is what I was talking about with that marketing and it's one of the things like I said with with. Nintendo and Sony, they don't do that anymore, if you've noticed. They go, hey, here's some stuff you're going to be able to play in the next year. Which, you know why, though, Microsoft isn't doing that now that I realize it? It's because, remember, we talked, because we've talked about this show two, two, the last two years, right? Yeah, again, for... Well, about the Xbox Showcase. We've done we've done the coverage the last two years. Like we did last year and then the year before. Yeah. It was Yumi and Talon the year before, right? I think so, yeah. And so, <laughs> I realized... Because the one two years ago was the one where they're like, you're going to be able to play all of this within 12 months. And then like more than half of it didn't come out. Right. It was like, it was like 55% of it. Like when someone broke it or 56% of it did not release in that window. And so they were like, well, that made us look like assholes. We're not going to do that. Right. And I, yeah, I guarantee you that's what it was. And so they're trying to like hype people up with the long form stuff again, but it's going to backfire because instead of, doing the the thing where where they do that and know that the games are going to be ready like nintendo and sony have been doing they're going like 
oh, we're going to promise that and then it's not going to happen. So now we're going to promise stuff. Hey, this stuff is coming eventually sometime. 2025, no release date. 2024 sometime, even though we're halfway through the year. It's weird. It's just weird and it feels backwards. But that being said, a new Gears of War prequel, I think really bringing it back to kind of the roots of the franchise. I saw so many people. It's been like, Hi, like they ditched the new characters. Fuck those new characters. Let's go. Like, I was like, okay, right. that's good. Like, that's good for the Gears community, right? It's good, like, morale because the Gears. And I think that's uh, who was it, Grub or somebody said, oh, a community that's had low morale for a while is going to get something to to cheer for. And I think this is it, right? Right. But yeah, this this is good. Like I said, this whole showcase really at Xbox, dude. Xbox has had fantastic showcases, and we, I mean, last, like last year, we thought, we like, how long have we been going? This time, almost two hours, just like last year, yeah. right? Yeah. So like, we last year we spent like two hours going like, man, this looks so awesome. Fable's cool, like all the other stuff. And I was like, oh, Redfall, you know, we've heard some stuff, but like, or no, Redfall was already out. We we're like, yeah, we know what happened with Redfall. But let's hope Starfield's better. Starfield Direct looks really cool. Like we, we did all this stuff last year, and then how many of those games came out? Like three? The year before they missed half of them, and they said these are coming in the next twelve months. Right. And th- this is why, like I said, the showcase itself is like an A. Like, absolutely. But they need to deliver on this shit. Like, that's always my thing with Xbox. It's because, like, I, I've told you guys, like, I'm a music teacher. And I have those students go, oh, yeah, I practice, like, I practice, like, an hour a day every day this week. And I go, okay, so show me the show me the tune that we were learning. And then they can't. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. because cause they, were all, they were good talk, but they didn't actually do it. Right? And that's, that's my only thing with this showcase that I feel like, is is the one thing that I'm worried about is just so many no release dates or 2025 sometime and even like the stuff that should have a solid release date not having release dates is just very strange to me and it just makes me think like they're still having issues behind the scenes when all I want is just them to get this shit out and have it be good like but like I said Indiana Jones must play for me about I'm gonna check out absolutely Wu Chang uh, what is it, South of Midnight? 100%. The Annapurna mixtape, 100%. Uh, Fable, right? Uh, what are your, what are your what are your must plays here, Lethal? Oh, 100%. Fable is number one. Um, I don't actually. Oh yeah, we did talk about it. I was gonna say, um, Fable definitely is up there for me as like the number one to play. Um, I was really interested in um, that 33 or Expedition 33 that RPG. Yeah, one. actually that too. I'll I'm, add that I'm too. very yep. interested in that one. And then, obviously, life is strange, but that's probably going to be playable everywhere, I imagine. Um, but that's definitely what I'm looking forward to. I'm, just, I'm trying to think what else. I mean, honestly, like Indiana Jones or Night Angels. I apologize. Um, oh my gosh, life. No, no, I'm throwing blanks here. <laughs> Night, Indiana Jones. Avowed. Sorry, I, I'm trying to think of the other first party game. No, mm. Avowed is the other one where I, I am interested in playing it. I know it's got a lot of criticisms and all that stuff. I am down to play it. It's you know I, I'm going to keep my expectations low, I guess. But I was I was drawn to I was still drawn to the game even when they showed off the gameplay. There's something about it that still caught my attention, and I kind of want to give it a shot and play it. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's definitely something I still want to play. You know, when that hopefully comes out this year. Um, and then some of the other ones were just like that Interpreta game, that mixtape one, right? Those types of ones that I, I love, and I'm gonna want to play those regardless. Um, yeah. Perfect Dark is another one. Um, oh yeah, so- I forgot Perfect Dark and Dragon yeah. Age. Yeah, and for me, the other big one I would say is South of Midnight. That's the other yeah. big one that I yeah. have to play that game for sure. It, it, yeah. it's, it had me in, in the first trailer, and you know, it has me now. So yeah, I, I remember us talking like this. Yeah. yeah, I remember us talking last year about South of Midnight. Like, this looks pretty cool. Like I want to see more of this next time. Yeah, you know, and, and now we got it, and now it looks like a a game that we right because we both played Kena. We loved it, right? I thought you yeah. loved it too, right? I yeah. love Kena. Yeah. I love Kena. Yeah, I thought Kena was like I was. I was sitting there not too long ago, going, "Man, I gotta get back and play that game again." Like. Uh, you you got the plat on that, right? Oh, I. He's like, I, I get so many, yeah. I don't remember. I I don't just, it's been a while, so it's been a while. But I think I did. Yeah, I actually think I did get the plat. I, I, I have, I have like, I have like twelve platinums. We thought I was like four hundred. Yeah, <laughs> I do have quite the uh, many plats. I think, um, I, I'm, I'm a I'm a Sony pony, as they say. Like all of mine are, are Sony Sony first party games. It's because I love like I love God of War, and I love Horizon, and I love Spider Man, and then the only other one I have is like Elden Ring. You know, yeah. so like I got that plat, like, uh, but yeah, uh, th- yeah, I think the show was, it was a really great show. It really was, but it, it just comes back to me for the, we got to see him fucking starting to deliver on this stuff. Yeah. 
Like that's my own. Like this, it's the one thing I've said. I mean, how many years have we been working together? Leave like three. Yeah. And and the entire time I've always said like just shut the fuck up. Sorry, Phil. Shut the fuck up and just <laughs> make the games. Like yeah. Like like remember Jim Ryan going? We're letting the games do the talking. Phil, do that. Shut the fuck up and just put out good games. Yeah. Like I don't want to hear about how we're pushing the boundaries and we're making sure that Game Pass. I don't give a fuck. I will pay you money for games if you make games I want to pay money for. Like, that's in the yeah. whole thing. Like, I've played games on Game Pass, and I immediately, like, I played Animal Well on PS Plus, and I immediately bought it on C. I played fucking Tunic on Xbox Game Pass. I immediately bought it on C. I still got to buy Cocoon. I haven't bought that. I played Little Kitty Big City on Game Pass. I immediately bought it on Steam. Like, I will buy games. And if you make good games that I want to play, Microsoft, I'll pay you for them pay you my money i want to do that i want you to do that because i want sony to have more pressure to go oh shit we got to start stepping our shit up like you do that and then we have good competition yep that's the and main get, part that's like the yeah. main part of it too that you you hammer there is that like a lot of people don't get that they're like you know oh like we just want to see xbox fall or whatever and it's like you that mindset has to go and has to stop because yeah and if same you don't, if you don't give, if you don't give playstation that type of you know competition and any other you know i guess well to be fair i guess it really is just them too that kind of fight in that in that same position yeah um, they, they need each other to really push out better content because you can look at this year for playstation and say you know this, this kind of is a little bit of a an, like a slower year for playstation yeah. first party output so like oh, you know it, it, it's one of those where like you know you you look at xbox you know showing up with some of these games that if they if they hit that's that's going to be great for them to hit and their lineup, and I think today for me, the way I look at it too, is that like this lineup of games that they had at this showcase, it does actually get me pretty excited for the future of Xbox. Whereas with yes. PlayStation, I don't even know what's happening. <laughs> like we don't really yeah. have the biggest, you know, like understanding of like, you know, output from first party. And, you know, we, we know some of the third party stuff that they're, that they're working with, you know, and, and to a degree. But like, as far as I know, like PlayStation, you know, I'm looking forward to Concord, which I'm not that excited about, you know? And so yeah, like, but Xbox I, I, yeah, I'll try it out, right? Yeah, I can pre-order yeah, course, it on Steam and then do the beta, give codes out and then right. refund it if I don't think. It. Right, right. 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 Simple as that. Right. The point is that like, you know, for me, this is just a good showing from Xbox. This is yeah. a, this at the, end, at the end of the day, what this told me is games, you know, do struggle to sort of hit when they need to be hitting. And, and, and there's that, that problem. But at the very least, Xbox is cooking with a lot of stuff, and it's really exciting to see all the stuff that they are cooking with. Yeah, yes. And I'm just excited for when these do come out. If they're gonna have if the ladies are gonna have these issues, that's fine. But let's get a let's get a banger out there, right? Let me let me get a let's uh, let's, yes. let's let's get a game that is being critically acclaimed, but not just that. The world loves it. People love it. That's what yeah. that's that's what I'm ready for for Xbox. And there's a couple games here where I can see that. I see that vision for some of them, you know. So that's what, let's, yeah, let's that's what I'm it. saying too. Is like is like I don't mind at all any like we talked about. It, I don't mind any delay. I want the best shit that you can put out. I want no more of this contractor shit that leads to knowledge loss and fucking ridiculous turnover. There's obviously those issues because we still hear creative directors and shit leaving all the time, right? Like. Like when Shinji left, everyone was like, and he, you know, everyone was like, oh, did he leave because of Microsoft or, you know, and he's like, well, I'm, I'm retiring. And then like to the day, one year later, after his non-competes up, he's like, oh, by the way, I'm opening a new studio. Because it's clear that he didn't want to work under that leadership. So like yeah. the stuff with that leadership has to change and they have to let these, because these studios are capable of doing great things. And I guarantee it's the Microsoft contractor thing. Me and Talon have talked, and you have talked about that so many times. Like, just stop doing it. Let the studios fucking do it. Pay people and give them benefits. And let them make good shit so you have a good brand. Because you guys could be the top brand if you stopped fucking around like that. And that's the thing. Like, I love PlayStation, but Xbox could easily over, easily, Lita, with their IP and their money, easily overtake PlayStation. Yeah. It would take them three years if they just stopped with the contractor stuff. Like, and that's, that's the thing, like, like, come on, you know, like, that's all I'm saying is just like, Hey, I just need you guys to actually let the studios do their thing. Don't let them run away with shit like Redfall where you, you didn't have any oversight. You didn't ask them how it was going. So they just kept fucking drudging away and put out some shit and don't let it be like Starfield where it gets over bloated. Like, go, oh, Hey, focus up, keep your shit in, in line. Right, because that's the thing with with that we hear from Sony all the time. It's like we cancel games because we know they're not going to be good, so we just cancel. Like we need to see that that kind of proactive leadership. And if we get that, I, like I really, I think they could do fucking fantastic things in gaming. But 
Right now, like I said, I, I want to say, you said it great. They have so much stuff they're cooking with that the bangers need to be coming. The yeah. fucking banger, dude. And that's what I want to see is I just want to see, like, I want to see a vow do well. I want to see it like Indiana Jones, man. I want that to be so good, right? Like that's, and that's like my, and like you said, life is strange. You're looking forward to that, right? That's not them, but, but there are the first party stuff like Fable, like Perfect Dark. We want that stuff to be good. And hopefully we can see them, give them the time and really make these games into the experiences that the Xbox label should be delivering. Agreed. And it's time. You know, they got it's the time. studios, it's time. Yep. so let's uh, let's start seeing them. And, and like I said, uh, I don't want to like always end it on a negative note, but I do want to say like, you know, this was, if anything, this was a showcase where it's like, it's looking really good and I'm really yes. happy for them yes. uh, to see like what the vision is and what they have coming. Like it's looking good. So I, I, yeah. I'm happy. This was a really good showcase. And I, and I, and I, it was. I, I think it was. we said this before too, but just to reiterate, like this to me by far was like probably one of the best showcases that we've seen this you know from the bunch of showcases that we've gotten this past week like i thought the showcase in my opinion was still fantastic like oh I, yeah. I mean overall i think it, it was a fantastic showcase like in comparison to the other ones i thought this was like the best one so far like this was yeah. such a good showcase so i'm excited oh, yeah. I, you would, know? I would I'm agree excited. i would agree like for high profile stuff because it, like, it's like we said like this feels like an old school showcase where yeah. they're giving those like, hey, this game's coming out sometime like Gears, right? Hey, there's no release date, no nothing but CGI. But now we know Gears is, is coming at some point. Right. Right. Um, and Microsoft still hasn't really changed from that except for 2022. And they, they were like, oh, we don't want to have that happen again. But this felt like an old school showcase where it was big. Whereas everyone else feels like they're shrinking down. Like, I'm, 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 I'm interested to see what Nintendo does. Right. Because yeah, Nintendo, nice I think one. they, I think Nintendo realized like, like Tears of the Kingdom was the last time they were going to do the, hey, this game's going to come out sometime. And, you know, that was like four years of waiting after that yep. first thing for any real information other than, hey, we're still developing it. It's not coming out yet. Like, they said that once or twice. Right. But, like, like I think that was the last time Nintendo's going to do that. And, like, Sony doesn't do it anymore, which is why we don't hear from their first party as much. They're going to be like, hey, this is coming out in, in this year. Because that just seems like how those two companies are doing it. But this did feel good because it felt like an old school. Like I said, though, the only thing that led to it was it was being too long because there was a lot of CGI only, limited gameplay, stuff like that. So it's, there's pros and cons, but I definitely did feel like this was a really good showcase. And there's a lot of stuff I want to see do well here. South of Midnight, I think, is like my highlight, personally. Really oddly enough. Uh, I'm one of those who like I, it's like the big games now. I'm just like, eh, whatever. Give me like South of Midnight, something that's a little smaller, you know. Right. Expedition 33, that looks cool too. Like I want to see that. Yeah, ben, the, the, ben there's Star, a good mix. The homie, you know, there's a there's a very good mix here. Like there's some DLC updates to some good game like Starfield, right? Yeah, yeah. For that. Oh, that you know, looks there, cool there, too. There's yeah. expansions for these. Like another thing too is like we do kind of kind of have to give props or not even props, but just give give that honest thing that like hey like Diablo, right? These uh, Blizzard games, right? They are a part yeah. of the Xbox first party portfolio now so like yep, you know at, at, th at this point too. at this point yeah at this point you kind of have to be like okay hey that hey that's a that's a crazy this is a crazy good showing that that's right? one of the things that the xbox what it is fans now. on twitter are going to be able to say every year that gta isn't out is you know we have the best selling game because you have call of duty you know like like there's uh, i don't unless like unless that microsoft like contractor thing really takes over and they start taking a huge nosedive you know, yeah. Uh, they, Call of Duty is going to sell the best selling game every year, except for next year when GTA. Comes out. So, it's just how it goes, right? right. Like, uh, but yeah. All right, so that's the wrap up for this whole Xbox showcase. We talked longer than the showcase itself, we felt, but I feel good about it. Uh, hoping that they just, like I said, hoping that they get this stuff out and, they, like you said, really hit that cadence. Yeah. Like, let's get some stuff going and cooking. Yeah. We got it. You guys can do this. Yep. This is just this make is it happen now. Hey, yeah, make, they, they, yes. they land Avowed and Indiana Jones at the end, to, you know, the end they, of this year. If hey, they do that, they're, they're that's a really good. good they had spot. Hellblade come out earlier. Like that's, yep. hey, that's like three major big games. So like that's really good. Yeah. And, and Stalker was supposed to come out. That's coming out too. Yeah. 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 They're Stalker. So yep. So we have that's a date for that. That's good. It's, it's looking good for It's a good year for Xbox fans. I mean, yeah, yeah, I, you know, people should be happy about that. And it looks like there will be an about extended gameplay look tomorrow. So maybe that's why they didn't do it with this. Oh, there you go. That makes so sense. So let's, let's hope that, you know, we've seen them take those criticisms. So that would be good. Good things for about Obsidian's awesome. So like, let's, let's hope. Right. Uh, all right. That's, that's a wrap up. Lethal, where, where can we find you, man? You can find me on Twitter, YouTube, 
Uh, Twitch, well, not as much Twitch, but <laughs> Twitter and YouTube for <laughs> sure, at Lethal1Up. Um, you know, I'm like Bobby here. We just talk a lot about gaming for the most part. You know, that's that's my Twitter feed. So I could talk about. So, you know, if you enjoy that, cool. And for YouTube, I you know, just a little bit of variety content out there. Um, so, yeah, go check all those things. And I do cards out here, too, you know, with the homies. So, fun yep. stuff. And I'm on uh, Twitter at Little Bobby TV, Little Bobby on YouTube, no TV. No. <laughs> but yeah, uh, and then 59 uh, at 59 Direct for the channel itself on Twitter, and then at Gaming Talent for Talon on Twitter. Uh, so you can talk with any of us when you guys want to talk about games. Thank you so much if you stayed through this whole thing. We talked about two hours again, Lethal. So that's a. That's what Xbox do to us with these showcases, man. Yeah, man. Should, they they wait, deliver the good showcases every time. Wait till we talk the, about the Direct one. No, no. <laughs> wait, the, the next well, one. You, the Nintendo Direct, dude, that's going to be four hours, dude. That will probably be a four hour. I mean, if it's as hype as it could be. If, it, if, they, got, if they got Wind Waker and Twilight Princess, easy. Talon is joining. It's going to be a four-hour discussion. Yo, that's the next <laughs> one to look forward to, guys. All right. Hey, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you watched today, it's me and Lethal 1UP. And you guys have a great day. Hope to see you soon.